All right, here we are. It looks like the audio is pretty good. Oh my god, my camera looks horrible. No, nah, dude, it looks great. <laughs> it looks dude, great. I, I look Welcome in. As hell. <laughs> if you don't on mine, it, it, you're shrunk down. So you know, you might be full screen. This dude's over here full screening himself, judging no, himself. Full don't full screen yourself, okay? Full screen, like a a better image of yourself or something. If you want to, man, you're all good. You look great. So well, I appreciate it. I look greasy, <laughs> dude. I love you, so you better stop. You better stop treating yourself badly. <laughs> We're here for a real talk with Regen, episode three, with Regen and your man Pep, Pepsi Freak. What do you want to be called? Pep Pepsi Freak. Okay, because I call you Pep Pep. Oh, that it works. I told everybody that a long time ago you told me that you would be my Pep Pep, and uh, ever <laughs> since then we've been best friends. <laughs> Well, that actually, um, funny you said that. It actually started um, in Perp's channel because he did that back in the day. You know, are you my pet pet? That thing. Yeah. And, uh, like, it just so happened that I was there. And I'm like, yeah, I am. And that's kind of how we broke the ice on that one. Yeah, and that's where that made-up story that I tell came from when I talk about which, you in my stream. Which one? The pet pet. Like, oh. Like, oh. <laughs> This guy told me a long time ago that uh, he would be my pet pep. And, uh, yeah, I've actually said that before. I wasn't just making that up. I made it up on stream, but I didn't just make that up to you. I did, you know. But, yeah, so uh, pep, pep pep is uh, another dude that I met years ago, like going on four years now, in uh, American Pixels channel, yet another one. And uh, we also hung out in Fam Times channel, which is now Barbershop. We hung out in Purple's channel, which he got the nickname Pep from. And uh, dude helped me, like, pick out my... F you actually picked, sent me my first PC. You, like, sent me a link. You were helping yep. me pick out my PC. Sent me the link that I actually went and bought that PC. So that's the PC that I'm streaming from now. That I've upgraded a little bit of stuff in. I've upgraded, like, the CPU and stuff like that in it. But uh, it's still, you know, it's still kicking. It's still alive and kicking. So, dude... Thank I'd you. I hope so. I just yeah, wanted to do this officially just to go live for a few minutes and thank you for oh, that. Oh, you're welcome. Okay. Over. It's over, dude. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. But no, seriously, you've been a you've been a serious help to me, man, over the years. I'm sure yeah, I'm not the to, only one that you've helped. Yeah, I, t I try to tend to help a lot of people. Um, you know, I look at it this way. If I can't help someone, I haven't done something right, you know, so... And my wife is one to attest to that. Like, I, I come off as an ass a lot. I know I do. Um, but it's not intentional. So I try to make up for it by helping a lot of people out. You know, I'm like, hey, I'm not that bad. I help so-and-so. Yeah. Really, it's just a punk. At, at least you got that safety net to fall back on. Of all these little yeah. people, we, we'll, we'll pick you up, dude, when you fall. Because you helped us all. That rhymed a little bit. But uh, I appreciate it. I know you're going to break out in some rhymes. <laughs> But nah, man, it, there's a lot that goes into that, dude. Twitch is like a cool place to, you know, a lot of the relationships that have lasted the longest for me have been through stuff like that. People that I've either gotten a lot of help from, like you and Andy and, and a couple other people who spent, shoot, hours, dude, researching stuff for me, uh, in voice calls, figuring stuff out, listening to me, like, be stressed out. You've, I mean, you and Andy definitely are two that have listened to me be stressed out, just like raging about this whole, like, you've opened me up to this whole awesome world. But as you said before we started, like, sometimes it's, it could be stressful. Sometimes yeah, you just I remember, want to be closed off. Like, when I first got you the list of computer parts and they were starting to come in, and you kept sending me messages on Twitter, you're like, what the fuck is this dude? What the hell is this dude? What is this? Like, oh my God, the OS is not installing right. Like, I swear to God, like, I could tell you were ready to jump off of your, like, patio or something, <laughs> like, through Twitter. I was like, man, just calm it down a little bit. Just relax. Going they only console. go in one way. So when did you, like, did you just always, because you're a little bit older than me, um, only by a couple of years. Only by a couple of years, but you are a couple of years older than me. And uh, it, you are, like, you spent your years wisely, I would say. Because I just got into PCs like four years ago, and I could tell that you've been in them a lot longer than me. Okay, were you ever a console person, or were you just like PC right out the gate? 
I mean, I'm just, I mean, I know, peace. I know that you have a PS4 now. Um, you're playing that dream I mean, like game. everybody. Like, you know, growing up, you know, Nintendo, Atari, I actually started off with an Atari 2600 uh, when I was a lot younger. I remember having to screw that thing into the back of the TV with those two little prongs that stick out like this on either side of the antenna base. Like, you had to screw that shit in. <laughs> um, we had an actual, like, black and white TV. I had to play everything on. But on Atari, it didn't really matter because most of the games were black and white anyways or monochrome, so um but yeah consoles to start and then i'd say pcs took over when i was about 10 to 12 somewhere in there when like doom came out i got my first 386 um back in the day it was 33 megahertz wow and that's what really kicked it off like i spent a lot of time taking it apart putting it together again um then when i got into high school i was part of the um kind of like not really a computer club because they didn't really exist then but um, our librarian, he was big in the computers, so he opened up a computer lab in the library, and uh, so he had a whole bunch of parts, and so he was like, do That's what you want cool. with them. So we just built computers out of them all the time. So yeah, it's kind of a mix. I'll play um, pretty much anything, you know, as long as it's a good game on there, I'll play it. It doesn't matter. So who, thanks for the follow, Cast Day's Polished. Thank you very much. Welcome on in. Wife. Well, Pep's wife. Very nice to meet you. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm Regen, Mike. My wife, Jess, is... I don't know where she's at. Have you seen her, actually? No, no. Okay, well, if you... It would have been hilarious if you said, have you seen her? And you looked around <laughs> and she popped up like fucking Blue's Clues. Be like... Woo, woo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like literally talking about getting a, under the like thing to get like a hold hand cam. She made an inappropriate joke about like not being able to videotape what goes on under the on on uh, on under the, the desk. Dude, thank you. Sometimes my tongue doesn't exactly want to work properly. Doing. That's but what yeah, she said. So you never know. Jess might be under there now. She's on the podcast. And y'all don't even know. Anyways, let's get back to the PG podcast that this is. It's PG, supposed to be. Jesus, it's not going to last that way long. Yeah, probably not. Probably not. So uh, did your, like, dad or anything, like, help you get into computers? Like, how did... Uh, it's kind of funny you mentioned it. Um, my dad kind of helped, but he was behind on child support, and that was his way of catching it was buying us a PC. Uh, so he, he bought us a PC, and that was kind of like the deal that him and my mom worked out um, to get him <laughs> caught off on back child support. And uh, so, yeah, thank you, Dad, for being behind on child support to get me um, to where I am now on PCs. So yeah, thank you, Dad. <laughs> Oh but that my being gosh. said, we have a good relationship, so there's nothing wrong there with me and yeah. my father. Yeah, that's well, that's good. That's good. I'm glad to hear it. I didn't mean to go down there. Um, no, it's fine. I don't care. I'm an open book. I feel you. I feel you. Well, that's cool. I mean, I wish my dad would have gotten me into uh, PCs back then because he set me down, let me play Doom a lot on his PC. My dad uh, used to work at Texas Instruments for a little bit, so he's pretty... You know, I live, like, in the Jacksonville area. There's a lot of drawbridges around here. He used mm-hmm. to be the supervisor of, like, all the of the electrical department. Um, so he was pretty savvy with, like, computers and stuff like that. But uh, I don't know. For some reason, he never really got me into them. That's why, like, I tried to get the boys into computers as soon as possible. Like, I, I built this PC that I'm on now. And... Uh, it like was very empowering and I was like, man, that's like, I I don't know. They've only had their PCs for a few months and I feel like they've already like gotten smarter. I've said that a few times, but I think it's really true. It's weird. They like have to be more on top of shit to get things done and get to even just opening up games, man. It's not just like moving over, clicking a button. It's a lot more intricate. You got to look up a lot of uh, tutorial videos and stuff like that. You got to navigate the internet a lot more. I don't know. It's just like everything's at their fingertips. It's really all they've ever known. Like when you and I grew up, we grew up in the analog age. And this is why like our generation, like our age group is considered millennial, but there's kind of like a, um, like an in between, like um, I forget what it is. Gen X and um, millennial. There's this like kind of subset of a, I don't know what the hell you call it. Um, but anyways, they, I'd like to know the word because, because both. I feel like that. Yeah, there should be. Oh, my God. I'm going to I know it begins with like an X. It's like uh, Zen, Zenial or something like that. 
Um, it's the first I'm hearing of this, but I mean, I like it because I felt like that, man. People call me a millennial. I'm like, dude, I feel like I fall in between because I get along with both millennials and what are the baby boomers is the yeah, one behind yeah. that. I get along with everybody. Great. Yo, Mike X TV, dude. Thank you so much, bro. Dude, when are we gonna? We need to play called. some uh, Xenial. Yeah, it's um, what is it here? Are the micro generations uh, a micro generation of people on the cusp of Gen X and millennial demographics? So it lasts from seventy eight to eighty three, and it's because we grew up in that that mixture in our childhood of analog and digital, and we were able to adapt and get into the digital age with computers and so forth. Because, I mean, you and I grew up with, like, 8-track tapes and vinyl, or records, as we used to call them. Um, so we know that that difference between all of it. You ask a kid now to use a rotary phone, they're like, what the fuck is that? Yeah, like, dude. they don't know. Some dude was tell, like getting on to me that I'm not, like, teaching my kids every day cursive. And it's going to go, like, out of style, and, like, it's going to be an ancient... I'm like, man, there's a lot of stuff that's gone out of style. Like, that's just the way that life works, isn't it? Like, there's a lot of stuff that when I was a kid, like, it's just, it's gone. Am I supposed to keep them up to, maybe cursive is a bad example, but yeah, I mean, I don't know. Am I supposed to be buying all of this stuff? And like, this was what this was, and this was, and this was at all of these different times. I mean, nah, I guess you don't have to. through like, history, but like to the point to where, I don't know. I think at one at some point I probably will. Now that I'm sitting here thinking about it and talking about it out loud, I probably will. Cause I mean we homeschool and everything, so that might be a fun little <laughs> lesson to go through one day. Actually, I mean, cursive is fine and all, but you know, my wife and I were talking about this, and yes, cat yeah. will throw you into the Xenial generation. You better because I'm 87, but I hung out with a lot of more people <laughs> from 84 and like 82 and 80s in yeah. general. So. But, I mean, that being said, cursive is not even taught in schools anymore that we've learned. Um, it's just print. And the main reason being is it's like a dying kind of written form because a lot of people just can't read it. And yeah. um, it's hard to read because everyone has a different way of writing it. And it's like I said, it was funny you brought it up because I think last week or two weeks ago, uh, my wife and I did an exercise of who writes what in cursive. So we went through the whole alphabet in, alpha, in um, uppercase and lowercase, and her style was so much different than mine. You could definitely tell it was still cursive, but we were taught two different ways of cursive. I was taught kind of like the English cursive with the big um, like circles on everything, yeah. where she was taught more of like the Western style of just like the short um, like swirls, like the short like little tildes on everything. That's so crazy. That's so crazy. Even that, with that in cursive, there's multiple different ways to do it. Yeah, that's that's one reason that like I don't mind that it's like, but man, I didn't realize until that guy brought it up that like, man, one day it's gonna be like an extinct, like nobody's gonna know what the fuck cursive is anymore. Like it's yeah. just gonna be like a lost language almost. <laughs> but yeah, Jessica writes in cursive without even trying. She just does it on accident. I'm like, dude, you got to stop writing, like, little notes to me in cursive. She's like, I'm not. I'm like, all your letters are connected. To me, that's just cursive in itself to me. Like, if all your letters are connected and, like, you don't pick up the thing, I don't know. She does yeah. pick up the pen, but her letters are all connected in a way that where it's so fancy, it's still – even her print looks like cursive, man. I don't get it. I don't get it, but – Yeah, my wife is the same way. She has such great handwriting that, They like... brought back cursive last year? I think they did in certain areas. Like I know here in Florida, they didn't because the neighbors were talking about it. He lives in Florida. Oh. In, yeah, I'm not gonna say where, thing. but um, yeah, that's crazy. I didn't know that. Hmm. I didn't know that. Uh, but anyways, well, these kids are gonna be hella confused because they're gonna fucking. Jess can they're teach like, that. Oh, okay, yeah, she's good at it. She's you know I'm not good at it. I'm not good at it. I used to tell my teachers, you know, because I did move around a lot as a kid. And from third to fourth grade, like, they were, like, just now teaching it when we moved. And we moved pretty far in that jump, too. Um, it wasn't just, like, right down the street. Some of our moves were just, like, all over the place but in the same town. But this one was a pretty big jump from city to city. And when I got to the next school, they were, like, months into teaching cursive. And I was so far behind 
So, like, I don't know. I just fell so far behind with cursive that I just couldn't – I could never keep up. And then they stopped requiring it in, like, uh, junior high and high school. So I was like, thank God. <laughs> but third yeah, to fourth to fifth was rough for me because I could I, – man, I just could not mm, – my right hand. Yeah, they taught us cursive and – um how to use like an ink pen to write as well i forget what it's called exactly um cat would know um see i wish I they know. would do some shit like that man for us i wish they would like you know they've got the chinese writing and everything which is it's like an art form almost mm -hmm. and it, it i feel like it man it's got to raise your iq level a couple points just being able to know how to do that all the different symbols and just tying them all together. Calligraphy it's... pen. That's it. Sorry. Like a calligraphy pen. Okay. <laughs> no, no. My, okay. I was asking. I couldn't remember what it was. In, but they called us calligraphy. She comes as well. in clutch, man, to finish your sandwich. Um, you, you finish no, each other's I mean, sandwiches. You hit the head of the nail there. Like um, Asian characters. You know, almost every um, Asian language uses characters. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Cat. You would know. Um, and it, one of the things that Cat taught me was, you know, if it looks like something, it is what it is. So tree it literally looks like a tree. Oh, that's cool. No, I'm kidding. I don't know. Oh, how dare you? <laughs> I actually do think that the tree looks like a tree, if I'm not mistaken. With this logic, I'd like you to send me a handwritten message about your favorite video game. I'd love to see that. Well, hold on a second. She actually says true facts. True kinda. facts, kind of. Okay, that's cool. That's yeah, cool. So, yeah, I wasn't hey, too far off. You've picked up some knowledge over the because years. You, one of the things that I've learned over time is like, I, I, I've read a lot on like the way language and writing has evolved over the years. And if you look back in caveman times, you see all the, the writings on the wall. That was their form. Their art was their form of communication. That was their written communication. They, they drew what they saw. And same with Chinese, it evolved from what they saw into a more elegant way of writing because your vocabulary expands so much. You have to define it more. Like, like um, one of the things that Kat's um, grandmother taught me um, when I first met her, first time meeting her. Um, by the way, my wife, Kat, she's, uh, she's Chinese and her uh, grandmother was Chinese. And she actually taught uh, English to or Chinese to English people for the Department of Defense. Correct me if I'm wrong there, Kat, but I'm pretty sure That's it was awesome. Department of Defense. And um, she was telling me that hair um, has many different words in Chinese, but all really mean the same thing, but just slightly different. Like um, State Department, sorry, it, close enough. Um, but like, I think it's oh, Mao is hair. And then there's an, it's something very similar to it sounds like it, but it's like cat hair. It's just very slightly off, and the written part of it's the same way, just with a different, um, like line through it that signifies that it's a little bit different. It's pretty interesting. Well, you're lucky, man, because uh, I've enjoyed like every time that I work with somebody or uh, like made a new friend or any, like even growing up, man. All my friends that were like they grew up in another country and they can't, they have like a different lifestyle than I grew up being accustomed to. Like, mm -hmm. I've always just been super, like, just super intrigued by that type of stuff. I used to get in trouble at my old job because I worked with a bunch of Cubans, and I would always, like, want them to tell me story time, dude, like, while we're trying to work. This, like, they all had crazy-ass stories. Like, they yeah. all came over here on rafts from Cuba. Like, all spent, most of them spent time in Guantanamo Bay. This one lady was, like, <laughs> 69 years old. Yes, she looked like she was, like, 40. And I'm like... Like, she didn't speak a lick of English, so she was – everything was translated through some of the other people. But, man, I was just, like, so intrigued. I've always been so intrigued. Like, even, like, homeschooling now, like, I try to teach the boys more of, like, a world history instead of just, like, American history. I try to teach them, like, they're just – you know, because I'm so interested in it, and I don't think that – I don't know. I think we're very limited here on the stuff that – we're shown until we hit 18 then it's kind of like okay now you can learn the rest for yourself but Pretty i much. learned i learned so much about other cultures after mm -hmm. i got out of school not so much while i was in like they had one day a year where it's like you do like a you all everybody cooks a different meal from every culture and we all share it and we all eat it and we talk about it and it's like one time a year you know what i mean yep. you don't learn that much about and other I, cultures I 
I think um, I was kind of blessed in that by growing up in the D.C. area because it's just a melting pot of all kinds of different cultures. Um, I mean, hell, you walk down one road in D.C., you're going through like all the embassies. So technically I could visit every country in the world in one day <laughs> you know, just by walking down at least once I have embassies here. Um, so, you know, it was definitely uh, a really good experience learning about different cultures in the area. Um, you know, like a lot of different Asian cultures, um, Hispanic cultures, uh, yeah. Middle Eastern cultures and so forth. So, I mean, it's, it was all pretty cool. And I actually grew up with a lot of like Jewish friends. So I learned a lot about that. Um, awesome, yeah, it's just, I, like you said, different area, different, um, you know, upbringing, different way of seeing the world. And it's only 700 miles away, you know? Yeah. It's pretty limited around here. I mean, I had a couple of Spanish friends growing up he said yeah a little bit yeah it's pretty limited i mean this is where i grew up and uh, i mean it's basically like predominantly white and there's the black neighborhoods here and there and everything so i mean i had a lot of black friends growing up mm -hmm. um that's why i can dance so good and that's why i got like rhythm that's why i could like <laughs> that's basically well, what the why my I... problem then jesus i can't i can't dance well, i can i Dude. can dance but not like dance dance like what people do now Dude, um my black friend tony wouldn't let me hang out with him because i couldn't dance good so he like forced me to <laughs> learn how to dance dances. with him that's what? dancist man oh man i mean we were getting <laughs> to that age where we were trying to like get girls and it was like the in sync was real hot at that time and it was like he was like dude you need to learn how to fucking dance or we can't hang out no more i was like well teach me man i don't have i got two left feet over here you know i'm like 12 13 years old with two left feet but I can dance pretty good now, and I I, well, I put it on my friend Tony. <laughs> the reason why I'm pretty good at, like, slow dancing, and I'm actually really light on my feet, um, there is truth when you play sports that they make you take ballet because the lighter you are on your feet, the less likely you're going to be in a position where your feet are planted. So that's why they taught you is just to be really light on your feet. I mean, I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, my God, I took ballet and did all kinds of crazy recitals <laughs> and shit. But, I mean, they, they took you through the classes to do, like, uh, what is it, pirouettes and shit. Um, so that way you knew how to be light on your feet, be able to, to adjust on your toes, be able to adjust on your heels if you are caught plant-footed and stuff like that. So it was pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, that was another I thing growing up in, in the neighborhoods right around here. I actually live in the same neighborhood I grew up in. We just moved back here a few years ago. Just so happened. But uh, I literally live less than a mile from the same house that it, I spent – most of my childhood in uh the the important years anyways which is kind of crazy so i i mean i got jumped in this neighborhood i've my friends got jumped in this neighborhood i went through a lot of shit in this neighborhood and that's another thing too growing up uh in this neighborhood man i was like you if you don't like slap box when everybody's like it's time to slap box then you're gonna have to like fight people every day because they're gonna bully your ass so yeah. I slap box like all the time. I like, I, I probably, I got pretty good at it. That's why I like, I don't know. That's why I'm always like, I've been into combat sports and stuff ever since I've been an adult. Like once I found some old, once I found YouTube and I went down a YouTube hole one night on like old, like Mike Tyson and Ollie stuff. I was like, dude, this is fucking awesome. And I was like 15, <laughs> 16. And then I moved out of this area and into a little bit better of an area where I didn't have to fight so much. But, like, I was already into fighting, so my parents, like, got me some boxing gloves. I used to invite, like, people from high school over to box at the, at like, after school and shit. I got, like, real cocky. My dad's like, all right, box me. And I got out there. I was jabbing him, jabbing him, moving around <laughs> him, jabbing him to the belly, jabbing him, jabbing him. And he just, he just loaded up, and that's the hardest I've ever been hit in my life was by my yeah, dad that time don't mess with your dad except for oh. i broke four of my dad's ribs <laughs> oh shit <laughs> now uh, it's funny you mentioned the boxing um when i was younger i got into boxing quite a bit too um but like high school our our, our high school had boxing and so along with baseball and I, I didn't do football much i was mainly baseball despite my size um i was built like a freaking tank for a tight end um, but yeah, I used to box a lot and, uh, 
I did pretty good, and I think that I am the reason why they stopped doing it at this school um, because <laughs> I was in the fight with this kid. And at the time, I was um, 260 pounds, and it was 11th grade. And uh, it was considered heavyweight high school, but that's like pushing the limit for high school. And um, the kid that I was fighting was 220, still considered heavyweight. There's a 40-pound difference between me and him. It was not pretty. And uh, <laughs> so I, I landed this one right hook, and it hit him so fucking hard, he went through the ropes and fell off and hit his head and, like, gave him a concussion pretty bad. Dude. And they were like, yep, you're not allowed to box anymore. You're hitting too damn hard on these kids that are fucking 40, 50 that's, pounds lighter. Dude, that's that's real life. I mean, just this past yeah. weekend, it was uh, Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder. Deontay Wilder weighed in at, like, 219. Tyson Fury weighed in at 270. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And they're both heavyweights. That's the heavyweight division for you. I don't. It doesn't make any sense. Every other division, you have to both weigh the same thing. But in the yeah. heavyweight division, it's just like you could weigh whatever, as long as you're over yeah. like two ten or something. I think then you're a heavyweight all the way right. up to I think two seventy is the max. I don't even know. Two sixty five is the max in the UFC, but I'm not even sure in boxing. I think boxing has super heavyweights as well, so yeah, I think there I, is a limit. I think super heavyweights in boxing start at like two fifty. Um, that's when you start getting into like the old era, like Foreman, Tyson, and stuff like that. They would now be considered super heavyweights, I believe. Um, but even that, they don't do too much because there's just not enough people at that size. Mm-mm. So they end up, you know, just cutting them, and then they balk it right back up right before the fight. Yeah. Um, and one thing I wanted to bring up is I know you do MMA and stuff like that, and um, there was this false sense, you know, going through high school, you know, speaking of fights and stuff like that, um, where people thought, you know, oh, you box, you must be able to fight really good. I'm like, well, no, there's a lot of difference between standing on your feet and using your arm and dodging punches because you know where everything's going to happen. Whereas like MMA, it's pretty much like a street brawl with a little bit of rules. Yeah. Um, and I try to tell people all the time, if you don't know how to street fight, you're going to get fucked up. I don't care if you know uh, Kung Fu. I don't care if you know Aikido. I don't care if you're a black belt at that shit. You get a hold of someone that knows how to street fight really well, you're going to go down. And especially yeah. if they're heavier, there's nothing you can do. Just get the fuck away <laughs> because you're going to get your shit rocked. Even training, man. Like, I, I, I'm I, not, like, that into MMA. That, that fight, like, I did that fight. It was on my bucket list, and I was going through a lot of stuff at the time. I went to an MMA show with a friend. And he was there to watch his friend that he went to college with. So we watched this guy compete. A few months later, I saw that guy that we went and watched. He had started up like an MMA promotion around here uh, locally with a couple people. And they needed a, a like late replacement for like I called. the <laughs> I, And I put my name in the hat, man. I was like, what the hell? I don't, and no training. I'd never trained jujitsu or anything. I had been in a lot of fights growing up and I had like boxed a lot and stuff like that I was pretty comfortable with that but getting in there and like actually like after the fight I actually did go train uh BJJ for a while and stuff like that but like you never get that feeling when you're training with somebody like like I did when I was slap boxing with a whole group (laughs) of people around you uh it was much more like when I actually went and fought the night that I went and fought felt exact it put me right back in that place of like having a whole group of kids around you and you're being forced to slap box when you really don't want to uh it was it's like terrifying dude your heart it was the same feeling when i went and went skydiving it was the exact same feeling dude so if you've ever went skydiving you 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 know what it's like to be in an mma fight because i literally got the same exact feeling yeah. Or if you've ever been and bullied in a group of kids, it's um, it's a very similar feeling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just being terrified. Is, like, one of the things with me, and this is why I try to avoid confrontation anymore, um, especially in my adult life, I don't know when to stop. My brain kicks into this different gear when I fight because I turn it into life or death. My mom and my dad always taught me, never throw the first punch, and if you are hit, make sure you end it. And so that was just the way I was taught, you right? Kill him, boy. And um, so, like, I have this switch in my brain that once I feel attacked, I'm not fight or flight. I'm just fight. I will continue until someone pulls me off. And then a lot of times I'll turn my aggression onto them and start fucking them up before I'm coming to. 
Like yeah. I hit this blackout period where I don't really remember what happened and that's bad. And people that get like that, you got to watch it. Like I know I have to watch getting into a fight, getting into a confrontation because I don't know where that off switch is. I think martial arts could definitely be <laughs> good for, for stuff like that. And it gives you a way if you had a good close gym though, like if you, if you learn these things, you learn how to do BJJ, you really like it and it becomes a good outlet for you. But then you get like all pissed off and you need that outlet and you don't have a rolling part. You don't have like a, somebody to roll with and you don't have any way to get to the gym. Like how the hell are you supposed to you supposed to just do jujitsu on yourself or something like I guess I do it every night. Dude, actually that you say that. <laughs> I Never just mind. got that. <laughs> oh, my God. This guy that was super into it, man, I went to a UFC, like, watch party with him, and he's over here in the corner just sitting here just, like, doing grips on himself. I was just like, I was like, what is that guy doing? And then, like, come to find out, he's, like, in BJJ competitions every weekend, and he was just, like, having a night off with the boys, but he's over there, like, legit doing these freaking holds on himself, practicing, and I was like, what the fuck is he doing? <laughs> Oh, man, I didn't want to get – I was like, okay, I need to get out of this. I don't want to become like that where I'm like – I'm just like, come here, motherfucker, just choking somebody out for no reason. It's like playing air guitar when you learn how to play guitar. Like, fuck, just stop. Get out of the fucking corner. Just stop it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, some people learn should not be taught those things. Learn so. play silently. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> That's too funny. So uh, what kind of games have you been into recently, man? I saw you playing that Dreams game. Yeah, I, I can't stop playing it. Um, Dreams, to me, is one of those games I've been waiting for for quite some time. Um, I don't know if you remember, but I was uh, dicking around with uh, Unreal for a while. And I really liked it. But the problem is, for someone like me, I get I have really bad OCD when it comes to things. So when I fixate on something, it can become a bad thing. And Unreal was really bad for me because there was so much shit you can do and so many things to learn that I was becoming overwhelmed. And the internet doesn't have like tutorials for every little detail in that thing that I wanted to do yeah. because you have to know how to code. I don't know how to code that well. I know what it looks like. I just can't like be like, oh, if this else that blah, 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 blah. I'm not that great at all that. Yeah. Um, but Dreams dumbs it down for you. So I still don't know everything that you can do in the game, but I'm slowly learning it and you can really learn by trial and error. So the thing I like about it is um, like, say for instance, I'm streaming it like last night I was streaming it and I was working on one of my levels, like one of the games I'm working on. And I hit a part where I was like, I don't really know how to do this. Uh, let me just go play some other people's creations. So I'm in there, I'm playing people's creations and I'm like, shit, I know what I can do in mine now uh, utilizing something I saw in theirs. It's not really the same thing, but yeah. here, let me go try it out. So I go into my game and I'm like, okay, here, how can I do this? And I start, you know, messing around with it, you know, using the blueprints, getting everything together. I'm like, ah, oh, that's how they do it. And so it's pretty freaking good, man. And um, I, the reason I like it is it just opens that creativity and it's endless. Do you mind like giving like a brief, like description of what the game is for people who don't know? And so Anthony, the ninja poster's gone, dude. Okay? The ninja poster has been replaced. Thanks to you, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> I got so much shit when I dyed my hair blue. I don't know if you saw that or not. I did. I stopped watching you when you uh, Okay. Did that. <laughs> well, damn, that okay, explains. My viewership <laughs> took a huge dive that month, actually, because people were like, um, you got a ninja poster and you're dying your hair blue. What is going on? Oh, uh, man. He it's said, like you were trying to become them. good at Fortnite or something. D dude, I just, it was just a thing. It was just a fun thing. <laughs> anyways, anyways. Anyways, yeah, Dreams. Um, Dreams is a game by Media Molecule, um, the same makers that did Little Big Planet. And okay. um, if you remember Little Big Planet, you would play, the, um, play each level and you'd get these bubbles. Those bubbles contained like another asset you could use in the level that you wanted to create inside of uh, Little Big Planet's world. So you would make a little 2D level um, using, you know, Sackboy, do all kinds of crazy different things. So it was kind of like the next step past Minecraft. Well, Media Molecule was like, okay, we're going to step this up a little bit. We want everyone to have the ability 
to make their own games and make it simple for anyone to really learn. And uh, so they came out with dreams. And literally, when they say, you can make whatever you can dream of, you can do it. Um, of course, there are some limitations um, around the engine itself. It's not like you can do some like Call of Duty stuff, which I'll get back to that here in a second. Um, but it gives you the entire engine to be able to do what you really want to do. You can import your own um, graphics, sounds, music. They have a music maker in there, um, kind of reminiscent to what you see in like some of the pianos um, for music making um, and stuff like that. So it's really cool. I don't know if you ever watched uh, Dead Mouse make some of his music on Twitch, but it's yeah, like that same kind of setup. And that's it's crazy. amazing to me that they have it. But um, like, say, for instance, you want to make a um, Super Mario clone. You can go in there and do it. You can make all the assets. You can make the guy look just like uh, Super Mario or Mario um, and just do it. And it takes you probably 20 minutes to make a viable looking game. Um, but then they have the ability for you not only to create, but you can play other people's games. Uh, so say, for instance, you're looking for a, a Mario clone, using that as an example again. You can just search for Mario, and you'll get a whole list of Mario games that you want to try out. That's crazy. So it's just one of those games that really opens up your imagination if you're into trying to make your own games. Um, it's a really good outlet for that creativity. It's pretty cool, man. I, I want to eventually get this set up to where I can quickly just pull up a video, you know, like uh, Young Jamie, Joe Rogan <clears throat> style. But I highly suggest going and watching a video of Dreams later if you haven't seen it because the game looks insane. Like I've seen some stuff. Do you think it's limited at all being like only on PlayStation? Do you feel like you'd be able to make your levels a lot easier on mouse and keyboard? All right, funny you said that, and that's why I wanted to go back to the Call of Duty thing. Um, so you actually segued right into that perfectly. So um, the maker of the maps, I forget his name, in Call of Duty, he's the one that was responsible for, like, Nuketown um, and a couple of other speed maps, right? And um, he's been playing Dreams nonstop since it came out. He was that's invited awesome. to the beta, like, eight months ago. Um, a year ago, actually, and um, he recreated Nuketown in there with the physics and the guns and everything from Call of Duty inside of Dreams. And he said that the way it's set up is more intuitive than using a keyboard and mouse because you're using the controller, like the six axis. You can, like, if I wanted to move something, I just literally move the controller left and right, up and down, and it moves it up and down inside of the 3D space and left and right. Um, but then I can use, of course, the left and right analog stick to do like more precise things here and there. Um, but he said that he was able to recreate the maps in approximately a quarter of the time it would take them inside of the engine that they have. What? Yeah. I guess I'm going to have to take the, I was, I just had like skeptical, uh, hippo eyes there for a minute. Cause I just using the whole, uh, man, I've never Oops. enjoyed that. I don't like the Wii. I don't like the freaking Nintendo switch little Wii motes. <laughs> like, I don't well, like I, none of that. I was too. I was highly skeptical of it. And the very first night I played it, I looked at my wife because, you know, I was playing it in the bedroom uh, right before we were going to bed. And um, I was like, I wonder if it has a uh, keyboard and mouse, um, you know, capability, you know, because PS4 does allow keyboard and mouse to hook up to it. Yep. And um, it said no keyboard and mouse. Um, and that's where I started finding these articles of some of these like top developers from EA, Bethesda. Uh, Call of Duty, like Activision, all these people are like saying, holy shit, this is very intuitive system. And a lot of them are going to start implementing these kinds of 3D designs inside of their own engines because it's so much more intuitive. Now, here's the kicker. Um, it was announced about three days ago that Media Molecule is actually going to come out with a VR version of the game. It's going to be a free update to it where you're going to put on your PS4 uh, or PS uh, VR. And you're going to be able to use your two controllers, go into the space that you're creating, and use the controllers to manipulate and move everything inside of the 3D space. And what you'll be able to do is say your character is three foot tall. Um, you can shrink yourself down to three foot tall and be able to adjust everything to scale because you're going to see where it would be for that character perfectly. That's insane. And I was like, oh, holy shit. And this is all on a console. And I was like... That's that just blows my mind. Now, one of the things they're also looking at is the ability 
to allow you to monetize your games. So one That's of the, the things next question doing I right had. Now, yeah, one of the things they're doing right now is um, the top five voted on by the community each week, or sorry, each month. Um, they'll make an offer to release it um, as a standalone game. And so you will get the royalties of, uh, of that game, but they will be your publisher. And since it's owned by Sony, Media Molecule is owned by Sony, it goes right into the Sony uh, portfolio of games or library of games, and then people can buy it if they want it. See, that's like a big thing that I heard about recently with uh, Warcraft 3 Reforged, I think it is. Mm -hmm. So I guess like back in the day, was it, what game was made from a mod that somebody created from that game? Do you know? Maybe it was Dota um, or something like that. Um, the biggest mod game that ever made it is Counter-Strike. Counter-Strike was a mod of Half-Life. And um, then Valve bought it from the person that made it, and they bought it for something. Well, the like reason that I, I brought up Warcraft is because I guess when they just made it, uh, they just re-released it. They put it in there in the terms of service that, like, anything that you create from this game, like, they own it. No yeah. matter if you make it. So I was kind of one, and people are pissed about it because it's like those people went on. I'm not sure what game was made from a mod from Warcraft 3, but whatever it was, they like put some shit in there now to where they re-released it, but if anything like that happens again, they get to keep it. So people were a little bit upset, so that kind of it makes me curious about this game like they're your publisher, but like how much of a cut like would it be worth it for somebody to go in there and spend a lot of time making a fully fledged game? It's it kind of sounds like it would be. You Even see, if they take the a cut, how much here, is the here's cut? Here's the thing with anything. If you made a game from the ground up right now and you used Unreal Engine, Unreal Engine's 100% free. You could go out there and download it now and you get everything with it 100% free. Um, inside of Unreal's um, Terms and Services, what it says is it's free for use. You can release little demos. You just can't monetize anything. They will get a percentage of that cut. And um, which is going to bring me to a really interesting story about PUBG and uh, Fortnite here in a second. So um, they're essentially you're bu instead of buying the engine and using it, you're renting it at that point. But then once you make your game, they get their cut. Then you have to find somewhere to sell it. And a lot of times people are going to go to like Steam or Epic Games and they're going to give you a cut of how much they sell it on their platform for. Yeah. Like for me personally, Knowing how business works, and especially in my line of work, I don't care. They could take 90% of my revenue. So long as I'm getting 10%, I'm still making money off of something I enjoy. Yeah. Now, I, I'm kind of being facetious when I say 90%, but at the same time, it's you got to understand it's business all the way around. Um, so either they're going to take a cut from Dreams for Media Molecule, or you're going to get a cut from either you know steam and then you're gonna get another cut from another engine that someone made it's gonna be this loop of constantly paying other people to have other people enjoy your work it's just part of the game yeah yeah i mean i've seen some pretty crazy stuff made through there that i could see like uh if it's just great i i just have so many questions around it man like those other types of games being made with unreal engine like it seems like multiple people working on it can work on it at the same time. Mm -hmm. uh, but with this, you can't like work on the same level at the same time with the whole group. It, can you? Yeah. You can. You could have like they a have, whole dev um, team come in there. So yep. even though that these people are taking a cut from you and everything like that, if it's that much easier, like you're saying that guy was saying – if it's that much easier and, and you cut out that much time and that much headache, man, like, why not just do that? Take that cut, even if it's a 50-50 split, 80-20 yep. uh, split, it, it would depend. I'd have to break it down, man. If I was a game developer with, like, a whole team, i like, man, what is the time it would take to do it here? The, the money, I'd, I'd have to calculate all that. Yeah, and here's, like, another um, thing to think about. When you look at games like Call of Duty, um battlefield and a lot of these companies big triple a companies they use their own engine like battlefield uses frostbite um it's the engine that it runs off of it's completely in-house they've developed it from the ground up now a company that like uh was it blue hole that does uh pub g 
said, we're not going to make our own engine. We're going to use Unreal, something that's already out there, tried and proven, has great graphics capability, and it'll do everything we want to do. So what they do is they just say, hey, we're going to make this game. Let's sign a contract. Here's how much you're going to get from our proceeds for us um, using your engine. And um, that that's really about it. They cut a deal, a contract, knowing that they're going to release the, the world's most popular Battle Royale um, ever created, even to this day. When it comes to sales, it's the number one uh, selling game of all time. I think only second to Grand Theft Auto V. But um, <clears throat> well, I mean, that being said, it's two toughest competitions. Cool. Fortnite and Apex are free, so. But I mean. it's easy to release a free game when you've just made a shit ton of money off of the creators of the most popular battle royale game to release your own battle royale game. Oh yeah, for sure. When you own for the sure. engine. For tell sure. me there isn't a conflict and of dude, GameStop, there. I was in GameStop <laughs> when uh, that thing first released on the Xbox, and this GameStop employee was pushing it hard on this little boy and his mom up there. And I wanted Fortnite to tell him PUBG. PUBG. I wanted yeah. to tell him so bad that like, even though it's only forty bucks, I'm hearing a lot of shit that that game is running terribly right now because it was like a week after release, and I oh, would, had watched some videos on it, and I was like, man. You are selling this game like it's the best thing since sliced bread to these people, and it's like on PC, yeah, but not on, so much yeah, on consoles. Not it's on still consoles. Like shit. Yeah, I don't. I wouldn't know. I've never tried it, but I've played PUBG Mobile and been blown away how good that runs. Yeah, like I don't understand why. But like that's I, part of the Unreal Engine. Like as soon as you make your game and you compile it, it asks you in a list. There's a drop down that says, "What do you want to release it for?" So as soon as I click compile, it'll say mobile. Um, PC, etc. So I can make it the world's most beautiful game in the world. I select mobile, it automatically dumbs it down and it'll make it run perfectly on the generation phone that you want it to. So say I want it to run great on a Pixel 2 and higher, I select the Pixel 2, it automatically knows what processor and stuff it's in it, and it'll dumb it down and make it work. Well, that sounds so pretty easy, dude. Why nothing. are all these games so poorly optimized then? What the hell is going on? Well, if it's that, that's everybody don't use Unreal Engine. Yeah. With PUBG, it's a different story, and this is why you heard about the lawsuit maybe a year or two ago um, where Blue Hole was threatening to sue Unreal because they released Fortnite. Now, part of the contract with uh, PUBG, and I've read it because I was highly interested in, in this because it seemed like a conflict of interest to me, and in my line of work, conflicts of interest are a big thing. Yeah. Um, so here PUBG is, is they're paying for the use of Unreal. Part of that pay is for them to support and help them overcome the challenges of the engine and optimization problems and stuff like that. Well, while they're sitting there suffering, trying to get their game to run well, and there are some major blockers and updates that needed to happen to the engine, uh, Unreal in the background is like, hey, guys, you know what's going to be a great fucking idea? Let's take that same idea and cartoon it and release it and make it really optimized fuck them, we're not going to help them right now until our game becomes more popular, and then we're going to help them because it's part of our obligation after they decide to sue us. That's what happened. That's really what well, happened to PUBG. After that got <laughs> solved, it seems like PUBG has still done very little to like keep their game fresh and new. I check back in on it every few months, and I'm just, every time I'm like, okay, like it runs way better than it used to. So that's a oh, big... God. Oh my god, dude! It runs so much better than it used to. But even still, um, the lack of like a uh, fun and interesting content. Even if you I like, they, they have just like three or four new maps, dude. They just released a new map not that long ago. Me and Andy went to go play it. I guess because from what I found in the research, the player base has dwindled. They don't want to split it up even more, so you cannot select which map you want to play. You have to just huh. choose randomly. So I played for over an hour. Me and Andy had like a little play day set up. I was waiting for him. I played for over an hour. Because you also can't select your location anymore. You have to play on – it just auto-selects it. So I was playing for like an hour. Could not get the map, dude. Finally, Andy hops on. I hop in with him. And on EU, you can select it. So he was able to select it. I had a horrible ping. But I was still able to play the new map. But here in NA, dude, you can't select which map. So even when they, you know, they release new content, it's it's just so poorly done that you can't even. It's, and the new map is awesome. I was like, dude, I want to play this a lot more, but I really want to play it with better ping because I'm in fucking destroyed. 
but still. You see, I, I just looked it up, and um, you were talking about the player base. On Steam stats right now, um, today the peak was four hundred or sorry, five hundred and forty eight thousand people. Dota had six hundred thousand. Is that only uh, NA? At one time. No, that's just Steam in general. That's across the entire okay. world. Well, I don't know. That's what I and the thing that I was reading it was saying that the in NA they've taken it and done that because the queue times were like so they were getting too long. Hmm. So they just put it all in one playlist. You can't opt out of the playlist. It's four different maps now. So to get lucky and get the new map, I was just like, damn, dude, let me get the new map. It just <laughs> came out like three days ago. Well, I want to play the new map. Content fresh. You're just praying. It's yeah. the new, uh, the pray um, update. You know, you pray, you get what you want. I'm turning my fan on. I'm, I'm, I can still hear you. All good. All good. But yeah, I mean, we got on there, we got shit on, and that's another thing too. It's like it, it felt like the only people left playing the game were literal gods. Everybody we ran into was shroud. I felt like I was like, what the fuck? Like, that's not fun to me, man. You gotta have a good like variety. And then Andy was like, nah, that's not because the player base is dwindled. That's because we're on EU and EU players shit on NA players. I was like, uh, yeah, maybe because that's what it like. Everybody was shroud. I was like, "What the hell is happening?" I'm sorry, we actually have jobs. <laughs> 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 oh man, I'm gonna edit that sorry, part I out. Resist that I'm gonna edit that part out. I'm just playing. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's even Realm Royale, man. We got on there in Realm Royale and EU. The EU servers are tough, dude. I'm not yeah, gonna they lie. Are. They are. I don't know what's up with that. I mean, we talked about it a little bit on mine and his podcast. It's like, dude, there's a difference in, like, you might have been into computers. You're like a, a outlier. You getting into PCs at 10 and 12, pff, how many – I don't know anybody else besides you that's in a – that got into PCs at 10 or 12. I don't know, man. I mean, there was a good group of people. Like, you know, going back to that time period, it's kind of like this ebb and flow kind of thing. So when I was going to school, computer technology was like the in thing, like, oh, my God, everyone's going into computers. Everyone needs to know how to work on them. But then when you did it, everyone was doing it. So there's this whole, like, large amount of computer technicians out there. And so what happened is the job market became overfilled with it or just flooded with it. And pay goes down. Trying to find a job with that skill set went down. And so then people started shifting off into, oh, we're just users of computers. We know how to use them, but we don't really know how to fix them. And then so you see this like graph go up and down consistently of computer technicians for repair or fix or you know network technicians and stuff like that because it just becomes saturated and unsaturated. And right now we're in a very unsaturated time where technology is booming and there's not enough technicians out there. Whereas like when I came out of high school, everyone was. It sucked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's uh, I don't know. Uh, you're you're a couple years older than me, so I think maybe, I don't know. Like just in this neighborhood, man, I didn't know one single person. One dude was into like electronic keyboard, and I thought he was like a genius or something, dude. I was like, oh, that guy's super smart. He could like, he's got this electronic keyboard all set up, super legit. Mm -hmm. I was like, wow, that's crazy. But like an actual gaming computer, I didn't see one of those until I was a fucking adult, dude. It was crazy. Well, don't forget that the modern scratch era of rap was created because some guy was like, oh, I can scratch this record. Oh, I'm going to make my own you know, on-demand playback system using this to be able to do the same loop over and over again. So, you know, it doesn't matter where you are. Electro electronics are going to be life for some people and then <laughs> from that you get evolution you know so yeah sounds about I mean, right rap and hip-hop thanks to that I and my did, wife is 100 percent right i learned that on drunk history oh really yeah man wife and i have been watching that show like we watch a couple episodes a night while we both pass out you know tripping balls to our meds <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding, dude. Like, like, we're fucked up, man. My back is screwed. My wife just had surgery on hers. Ah, man, it's 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 kind of hilarious. I mean, like, yeah, when you we said have... we're fucked up, I thought you were just being like a little bit funny. But yeah, that's it's actually serious. Like they actually got in a serious accident a few months ago, 
Mm-hmm. And uh, he hit me up and let me know on Twitter, like, I've been kind of MIA because cause this happened and stuff, man. And it's – I'm glad you guys are okay. I really am. Yeah, we're we're in good shape for the shape we're in. I mean, I say okay. Like I like yeah. we were talking and everything. You're like, yeah, I'm in pain all the time right now. I say okay. <laughs> I'm glad you're alive. Yeah, I, I know what you mean. And, you know, it's, it's kind of funny. Like you don't know how to react to, like, people coming up to you constantly – you know, asking how you're doing and yeah. stuff like that. Like when I went back to work, I went back to work actually like I think three days after the accident. And it was just because I wanted some kind of normalcy in my life. And my boss was like, no, go the fuck off. Like yeah. <laughs> go home. You need to rest. Um, and so I spent a lot of the time with my wife um, while she was recovering and stuff for like, I think a week. And then I went back and I felt a little better. Now, one of the things with me is I was so focused on taking care of the kids, the house, uh, making sure my wife was good and work that I was neglecting myself. And um, so it really didn't hit me how much pain I was in until I want to say three weeks ago when I started to do something. I was like, man, this this shit's really starting to become a problem. Like my left um, arm and hand kept going numb. I'd wake up and it's just like. It doesn't feel like I have a fucking arm. Like, it's like, what is this? Uh, So anyways, um, I have been going to the doctor and I found out I have three herniated discs in my neck, uh, which is pinching on the spinal cord. And it's been doing that since December 5th, which is the accident. And my my doctor, after he saw the MRI, he was like, how are you doing this? Like, (laughs) how do you do that? You know, (laughs) I was like, I have to, you know, it's you nothing would get done there's no one else can that can do what needs to be done around the house so i had to um but now i'm getting uh i'm going to be going to physical therapy for it and um getting it taken care of the right way well that's good man and i'm glad i mean even though you had to go through that and you're just now figuring it out i mean us men we got to do what we got to do sometimes and uh, you know that that's that's terrible hopefully you didn't do any uh you know, permanent damage by making lo- like riding on it a few months like that. Can't do any more permanent damage than it's already done. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I'm, I'm I got scars like you wouldn't fucking believe, man. So I mean, what's one more? You know, what's a couple more? Dude. But uh, you know, this is the, the the interesting thing about it. I was gonna say the funny thing about it is, uh, but the interesting thing about it is, my wife has never had any kind of major injury before ever, and then the first thing that happens is, oh. I'm going to break my fucking back. I'm like, this isn't like a competition cat. <laughs> and she, uh, she shattered her uh, L4, you know, so. Jesus. I yeah, mean, burst dude, that's it's pretty nasty. Thank goodness you guys have each other, you know, because I, I couldn't imagine going through something like that alone and not nope. having anybody because that's got to be tough. I'm, you know, you got to have Unfortunately, somebody Unfortunately, there are people out on. there that have to do it, you know. Yeah, definitely. Thank goodness you guys have each other. That's that's. Man, you're lucky enough to have her to give you all that, you know, diversity in your life. But man, well, she's thank like, you, Kat. good thing, yeah, uh, <laughs> he's a winner for sure. That's awesome. I was gonna say, good thing she has you, man. Just you always need somebody for these tough times in life like that, man. Yeah, owing yeah. back to when I say I'm an asshole, I'm really not. I mean, I really am, but there's a. Wait, did you just mute? Yeah, so, huh? You just like muted yourself for a second. No, you I said, didn't. Oh, uh, like two words cut out. Well, you, it happened to you earlier. I think it's something with Discord. Damn it tends Discord. to do it at about the one hour mark on chats for some reason. It's dumb. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Anyways, we're we're doing good recovering right now. It's time. You know, people at work going back to that, you know, like for the first week when I returned, I was like bombarded by people constantly coming to me. Um, How are you doing? How are you feeling? And then after I say a quick little response, like, how's your wife? Yeah, I'm like, would people stop asking me how the fuck I'm doing and just ask me how Kat is doing? Because they don't give a fuck about me right now. Just ask about my wife. Like, stop asking <laughs> about me. You know what you're coming to me for. These are people that don't talk to me on a regular basis. They're like, oh, my God, honey, how are you doing? I'm like, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. How's your wife? I'm like, okay, just lead with that next time. Jesus Christ. Dude. But, yeah, I, I, it's, it's tough to get used to that because you're used to being that person that's asking oh, how's the family after all that? You know, something like that. But when you're in the position of receiving it, you feel kind of weird. It's it's a weird feeling. Like, yeah, I don't know what to say. Like, 
oh, her back is fucking broken. She's doing horrible. She can't walk. She's in the bed. You know, and all. like, no, all you can really reply with so they don't feel bad is, oh, she's doing good, man. Surgery was good. And, um, you know, she's in a little bit of pain, but it's not that bad. When in reality, you get home, you're like, fuck, this shit sucks. You yeah. know, it's just like, what the hell? Well, but, you know. I mean, the struggles in, I mean, this is way different. Um, I mean, I was in a car accident and stuff back in the day, but thank God, like, I, I had no major injuries like that. I had to go to physical therapy for a few months and stuff like that because of neck pain, but, like, there was no, it was mainly because of, like, whiplash or whatever, you know, like, there's yeah. just re residual stuff because of that, but, like, I, I don't know. Like, I, I hope that this ends up being like i don't know the the struggles i've always had in life like end up being like looking back five ten years later it ends up always making me like a stronger version of myself than i was before mostly just mentally not like physically stronger or anything mostly just mentally stronger but i i take that stuff i don't take that stuff for granted as much as i used to because like I, I look at it like man by the end of by the time I get to the end of my life I want to go through as much shit as I can and and hopefully I come out unscathed as many times as I can because I feel like a, you know that's the only way I'm going to be able to become uh the best version of myself so hopefully you guys can you know somehow I don't know medically uh come out you know a few years from now and be completely pain free and everything but also yeah. mentally stronger and well here's and here's as a relationship stronger as well you've seen moana right oh yeah so there is an, a really good saying in that movie that a lot of people think is just applicable to teaching moana how to sail when they're doing their wayfinding and everything um oh my god maui oh, that's right his name maui says that wayfinding you know she's like how do you know where to go and he says you know knowing where you are by knowing where you've been and that applies to your life that that's yeah. really just saying the whole time because she doesn't know who she is right it's knowing who you are by knowing where you've been so what it's saying is your past defines you and makes you who you are today that's how i've always like really understood that saying not necessarily Oh, I'm just going to drive down the road and now I know where I'm going because I know where I was. No, it's not like that at all. It's, it's deeper than that. Dude. From a Disney movie. Dude, I love Disney movies for that. I love Disney movies altogether. I'm, I mean, I got kids and stuff, but I always, yeah. and they always throw some little secret hidden meanings that you could leave the movie theater like really, really thinking about it. Like Frozen like 2, the, man. I like. Um... It's, I like Frozen 2 better than Frozen 1 because I, I don't know. Like the songs weren't as good. But the message, the messaging about like finding yourself and like being comfortable with yourself and like, I don't know. Uh, I took a lot more than, from Frozen 2 than I did Frozen 1. I always Frozen liked the one I didn't like because of that one asshole prince. Like you knew he was <laughs> bad from the beginning. No yeah. one wears all uh, white. I didn't. From the first <laughs> song, bro, it was like we finish each other's sandwiches and it's like that first song. I was like, man. Me and Jess were kind of that similar way. Like we f we basically fell in love the first night we met. Uh, so yeah, it's like ah, no, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> no, we did not. Okay, we went to Checkers and we had a nice, pleasant meal. Okay, some Checkers burgers. <laughs> hey, you know what? I give you credit. It's uh, more expensive than McDonald's. So hell, that was a five course or five star meal. Shoot, Checkers. Back in yeah. the day, I, I don't know, maybe when they switched to rallies, uh, they they upped their prices, dude. But you used to be able to get a big Buford, which is basically like a Big Mac, except more yeah, yeah. shit on it. And it was like three bucks for that thing. But you're I don't not know. making the case. I was trying to make you look better, dude. The yeah, you're right. Day. You're like, right. Nah, it was it was bad. It was it was a bad like little first. Take her to Sizzler. For me, but... <laughs> Yeah, I had plenty of money at that point. I could have taken her anywhere, but it was like, you know, you want to go to rallies or checkers? Yeah. She was like, absolutely. That's why I was like, oh, she's a freaking keeper. Because Jess was like, it, honestly, my memory is so bad. Jess might have been the one that asked me to go to checkers. Huh. Who knows? <laughs> Dude, I definitely, it wasn't like, I didn't know if it was a first date or not. Uh, But, you mm. know. 
when we first That's went exactly out what he's saying, by the way, on our official first date, I'll have you know that I took her to a nice place, and it was legit, okay? I spent oh. most of my savings that was supposed to be for a car when we first met uh, going out to, to dinner with her over that like first two months. I just, just kept draining it. You didn't get a car, but you definitely got a ride. How dare you? Months hey, that was later. Cool. Like, come months on. later, sir. No, I'm I'm saying in general a riot of your life, meaning not like sex. I don't know why do you keep going to that tonight? Like that's what are so you weird. talking about? You are obviously the one taking it there. <laughs> Nobody's <laughs> fooled. Nobody's fooled. <laughs> Dad is back. Hello, Nesh. Welcome in. We're just talking about uh the birds and the bees. And and that's lots about of other it. things. <laughs> lots of other things. Man, what were we talking about just before that? Uh, Video games, and somehow we got into Moana and ended up on... You did bring Moana up, man. Moana's a very good movie. Uh, I I don't know. You almost got me a little teary-eyed because I cry a lot in movies and stuff like that. You brought me back to... Yeah, there's a... There's a lot of good things you can take from movies, and I always like to, when I'm watching movies or reading a book or like anything like that, I always look at it like, okay, this is another human being like me, and he went through his life experiences, and he's making – most of the time, people like when they're writing books and making like screenplays for movies or whatever, they take their life experiences and they like put a science fiction like fantasy twist on it, Mm -hmm. and like life experiences that they learned, they want to pass that on to the audience some way. But they don't want to be too preachy. This is just the way I look at it. They don't want to be too preachy, so I'm gonna like, I'm gonna secretly pass some hidden secret kung fu knowledge on your ass, and you won't even know. And it's just, you know, it's really like if Terminator. you break it down, it's some shit that they probably went through when they were about ten or twelve years old. It's like Terminator. Ace <laughs> Nova, what's up, dude? How you doing, Ace? It's like Terminator. How so? It was just a joke. Okay. Because the only thing you can take from that is fucking AI is going to kill us all. Basically, especially yeah, with man. the new one. There's no end yeah. There's no end to it. I yeah, hate the new Terminator, can't man. can't change the past. Okay, yeah, you can't, but you can change the future. By knowing where you've been. By knowing where you've been because of the movie <laughs> Mo- Moana. Moana. Guys, but, uh, uh, here, let me think that's dude i want to have these uh you know with certain people like this is heavily inspired by the joe rogan podcast i've been listening to that for years and uh you know he has all these different people on that he's never met because his agent and their agent was like hey y'all should get together have these podcasts but the ones that i enjoy the most are the ones that he does periodically with his friends like his friends that he's been doing comic with for a while Friends that he's just like met through this or or whatever through MMA whatever those are the ones that I get the most out of because it's just it's way less preachy it's way less like trying to get this like piece of knowledge down your throat it's just like two dudes hanging out so what I was trying to get through get to is I'd love to do with these with you uh, periodically dude have yeah, you no on and like uh dude okay the guest one the guest and I have a pep. I don't know if you could see the chat, but I made some custom ac- commands I see for it. you, dude. <laughs> uh, so, uh, yeah, let's talk about Flat Earth for a moment. Really? <laughs> Do we have to? <laughs> nah, we don't got to, man. I'm we kidding, were just I'm on kidding. a tangent at work at that, and I'm just like, my God. Because there was someone that honestly at work believes that the Earth is flat. And like the one thing I always go to is I'm like, okay, so what, this is what gets me. They were like, okay, so um, the earth being a globe is just totally unbelievable. And so my reaction to that was, okay, what shape is Mars? They were like a globe. I was like, what shape is Jupiter? A globe. What shape is the sun? A globe. I was like, so you're telling me that the earth is flat. And it's unbelievable that it would match literally everything else that you can see. <laughs> but it's completely unfathomable that this planet would also be a globe. I just I just thought that was kind of funny. They were like, well, you know, you can see certain things from a distance. I'm like, oh, my God. 
uh, I'm not going to get too much into for the it, guy in the rocket, at least at the end of the trip. Anyways, are you making, a... <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'd really love to do? And I would gladly donate at least $300 to this cause. I want to have like Elon Musk design a space shuttle. Everyone chips in to have this space shuttle built like it, fuck it. $5 million, $7 million, however much. We can get that through crowdfunding, no problem. Hell, Elon Musk might even throw $3 million to it, right? And take some of the top flat earthers and shoot their ass into space and say, there you go, bitches. Like, go, go look at it for yourself. And then when they come back, what are they going to say? I mean, dude, they're like, supposed to be opening up, uh, like, tourism to space mm -hmm. next year. So, I mean, dude, the more and more people that go up, that's like – I got into it with with some people before, and I, I, I got so tired of it because it's like our conversations just kept ending up there. And I'm like, dude, like at first, I didn't mind talking about this with you. I'm just like entertaining it, like for just – we're just bullshitting and conversating. But then it's like now this is all you want to talk about ever. And you yeah. say that you don't believe in it. You're just like bullshit. It's like – but I'm starting to think that you really do with how much you bring it up. And how much you're speculating about all – I was like, just go do tests for yourself, dude. Just go yep. – just go learn some stuff for yourself because I'm pretty sure Neil deGrasse, Neil deGrasse Tyson said it. Like the, the less educated you are, the more susceptible you are to believing stupid shit like that. Yeah, and I'm paraphrasing, yeah, sure. but if you have a high school education and that's all you have, even if you have a two-year college degree or a four-year college degree – if you have not went to school in these specialized like things, or if you do not have like tons and tons and tons of life experience in these areas, like you're just super susceptible to believing a bunch of dumb shit. If you've never, if you're 30 years old and you've never like studied anything about dinosaur bones other than the shit you learned in sixth grade, mm -hmm. and then some, and then you watch a YouTube video, dinosaurs were never real. You're super susceptible to believing that video because you don't know anything other than what this video – you don't – like, you know very little. Of course you're probably going to believe this stuff. It's a very articulated, like, video, well put together, well edited. Yeah, now you've left the video thinking that dinosaurs were never real because you knew very little about dinosaurs in the first place. Like, yeah. what do these people that believe in flat earth know that, um, about the earth to begin with? It's not like they were earth esper experts and then they were converted into flat earthers. Like, nobody right. never was... <laughs> they uh, saw a YouTube video, they're like, oh my god, this shit makes sense! And then I'm wow. like, oh, Jesus. Why didn't, why didn't they see a NASA video first? Like, <laughs> that's the first video they see, is the Earth is flat. Like, oh like, my what's god. What's the capital of Idaho? That's the first thing Boise. I'll ask and be like, what is it? Boise. Okay. And if you know that, and you're also a flat earther, then I don't know what's wrong. I'll ask you another, like, Geo geological question geographical but, question i'm sorry <laughs> no but it's fine it's, but here's it's the thing like, that's scary you know you're, you're you're saying that you know it's less educated people there's actually some pretty smart motherfuckers that are part of that movement and it's just they have it, like that's what blows my mind particular like but it, they're not smart in that area they're not smart like i guarantee you if if somebody's a flat earther start mm -hmm. asking them questions about the earth they're probably not going to know very many things. They're probably not going to know a bunch about geography or geology or anything to do with that. They probably, even if they are smart, they're going to be like super smart in their area. But then, right? But I'm I'm going to play devil's advocate here a little bit. You can say the same thing argument for them to us. We're not experts at it. We're just talking about what we know and what we were taught, right? Yeah. So that that's kind of like a straw man argument. And I know where you're See, going. But I'm with not that. out there pushing that the earth is round or anything like right. that. Right. But if just... I get to the point to where well, I want to know really bad, I'm going to go and find out for myself. Like mm -hmm. right now, I'm pretty comfortable trusting other people that are smarter than me that the earth is round. And if right. I ever got so skeptical to where I was like, I'm not sure then I would not go and watch YouTube videos or listen to something. If I was that skeptical about the shit, I'm just going to – I I don't know what – if you're that skeptical about life, I don't know what could help you really. Because even Nothing. going to college, you're going to be like, this shit they're teaching me ain't right. It's not yeah. real. It's like, but that's the whole scientific method. If it can't be reproven and reproven and reproven, the things that can't be reproduced like more and more and more, those are the things that a lot of people don't buy into. So – 
Right. And here, here's one of the, um, the things that I struggled with my entire life is, um, I'm not trying to get like religion involved in this too much at all, but when you believe in something that you can't see, but you don't believe in something that can be proven, like science can be proven. Now, granted, there are a lot of theories out there, but there's a difference between a theory and the definition of a theory versus like other like small little scientific facts, right? Uh, actually, scientific facts is wrong. You can't say scientific fact because science is always seeking out the truth, right? So they say theory because that is the definitive uh, result of many tests. So now they're like, this is theory, like uh, Einstein's theory of relativity. We can prove based off of the equipment we have now and the understanding of mathematics that that's true. You know, time, the faster you go, um, closer to the speed of light, the slower everything is around you, which means you are time traveling. Um, which means if you traveled one year at the speed of light away from the earth and you traveled back that same speed, the earth would have aged something like, I forget what it is, but it's like 400,000 years in that time. But to you, it was only two years traveling at the speed of light. It's really fucking weird when you start getting into the theory of relativity, but it's hard for you to understand that and comprehend it. But think of it, you know, the easiest way, and this is how Einstein actually came up with the theory. He was traveling on a, um, at the time, one of the fastest uh, trains. And um, he noticed that things didn't look right when he looked out the window. Things started getting smaller as they were passing. And that's what made him realize, ah, theory of relativity. But I'm not going to get too much into that. But my whole point was, Science, you can look at the results of a test that's done and see that X provides Y result. And to dismiss that result and say, well, that, that's just not right. And that's what flat earthers do. They take it in the reverse. They disprove the facts to make up their own means versus going out and performing a test in a structured manner that says, this is what I'm doing. This is how I'm going to produce the results. And here's how I can show that I'm able to recreate those results time and time again. But instead, you get very vague answers like, oh, well, if you stand at this particular spot, you can see the buildings on the other side of this lake, which you shouldn't be able to see because it's, you know, 12 miles away. And the Earth's curvature is supposed to be six feet for every 12 miles and all this and that. And but what they don't realize is the Earth isn't like perfectly a sphere. You know, it has its like flat areas and it's round, more rounded areas and everything else. But like if you were to shrink the earth down to the size of when you look at the earth, first off, let me start there. It feels bumpy. It feels rigid, right? It, you can see like mountains sticking up miles yeah. above you. But if you shrink the earth down to the size of a golf ball, it's going to feel smooth to your fingers because all of those things despite how large they are, but to scale, they're very minor. And so when you take um, one area to that golf ball and you hit it with a hammer, it doesn't mean that it's necessarily no longer a sphere. It just has a flat spot in it for whatever reason, however it's created, right? And that's what happens in those areas. And they, they pick them very, very um, selectively. Like, why can't you reproduce that same thing looking from Chicago to New York City? You know, like you can't reproduce it anywhere but this one spot. But that's your proof that this shit is real. And that, that's what gets me. But anyways, believe what you see, not Dude. what you hear, unless it's from Dude someone. Dude even, like, sent me a video of them proving it with, like, a laser way across this lake. And they, like, sent it across at uh to this boat, like, uh, 30 foot out. And then the boat mm -hmm. went three miles out. And then the, they, like, were trying to find the laser point, And they had to put the freaking whiteboard, like, way in the air. Yep. And then dude was like, these are paid actors. Uh, like, he sent me the video. I started watching. I was like, okay, maybe he's starting to convert. And then he was like, these are paid actors. I was like, no, the, the best I was one like, then go is do it yourself. Rent a boat. I'll go yeah. with you if you want. Do the fucking experiment yourself, dude. If they're paid actors and you want to know that bad, these do that experiment bad. yourself. I was like, they're paid actors. But the thing that gets me is there was a documentary that my wife and I watched. I forget the name of it, but it goes through the whole thing following this guy who's the leader of the, the Earth Society and um, a bunch of his friends. And he's like talking about all of his different theories 
and why he believes it and stuff. And he's actually a really smart man. He has multiple degrees in different fields. He's not an idiot by any means. That's what I was saying. Like some smart people get caught up in this and you just kind of wonder why. Kind of like Scientology. Well, he's pretty smart because, I mean, dude, uh, you know, how much money has he made from all these YouTube clicks on all the videos he's made? How much mm -hmm. has he made from all these uh, speaking things, these speaking appearances that he does? Right. He does right. these conventions uh, that you have to pay money to come to. Uh, like he's making a killing off of this. So yeah, he's right. pretty smart. And that's why I think it's all a ruse because he knows what he's doing. Like <laughs> he's just causing drama to cause drama because it's making him money. But then, you know, one of the things they proved at the end of that thing was like, they're going to do the big experiment with the lasers. And so it's the true flat earthers that they've been following around this whole time. They're like, we finally raised enough money to get a powerful enough laser to run this test. And then they run it and then they shoot it through this, like uh, the board, and then there's another board on the other side, and it should hit the same spot. But the it wasn't hitting the board at all, kind of like what you were talking about on the boat. And it fucking shows the guy, he's like, oh, well, that's not right. And then just and the documentary ends. <laughs> it's great. Like, the whole documentary literally ends with their one failed experiment oh, and that they were trying to disprove. That was the whole premise of this whole documentary was this one what test to prove that, that the Earth was flat. Where was this documentary <laughs> aired? Um, I think it was, uh, I'd have to rely on my wife for that, but yeah. I actually think it was History Channel. <laughs> <laughs> they put some crazy stuff. Ancient Aliens oh is on History Channel. I'm going to try to find a video because it is on here. They got some crazy it, stuff on History Channel, dude. I'm like, what in the world? He said, I seen that doc. <laughs> <laughs> May have been on Prime. Oh, it was Netflix. It was Netflix. It was Netflix. Wow. Yeah. And Netflix doesn't care. They'll they'll get behind anything anyone wants to pay them money to produce. Yeah. And um, dude, it was it was just fucking hilarious. I I'll find the video and I'll send it to you um offline here. But like, it's it's just fucking hilarious, man. Like, the look on their faces was like literally like, my whole life is a fucking lie. Dude. The the world really isn't surrounded by a giant hundred and fifty foot fucking ice wall. <laughs> And that's oh, another man. thing, like, they, they make this, this theory, like, the Earth is, like, surrounded by this ice wall. And then if you try to go past it, military will come out and get your ass and take you away. And there's this big conspiracy that somehow all the nations agree to. That one thing, like, yeah, fuck you because, you know, you're, you're white. <laughs> and then, but we're all going to agree that we're going to protect the, uh, the, the, so the outer... Uh, edge of the earth you know like uh, Dude, come on we're all man. on the truman show man this is just a test and right whoever gets to the end and figures out the secret man wins so mm -hmm. i don't know about you but it's gonna be me it's, i'm gonna find that door and go through it man i'm gonna figure out the secret passcode to life or whatever this is matrix you know, honestly, dude, there was a Logan Paul video that he did on the flat earth shit of like 50 something minutes long where he mm -hmm. did like a basically like a documentary style, uh, like him converting to flat earth, going to that convention. But really, it was just like a comedy, like parody of a documentary about somebody falling into flat earth. <laughs> and it was actually really good, dude. It was hilarious. His friend is like. His it's also his roommate has got all these posters like covering up all his flat earth and then like like he finds they the find Logan Paul one? It was Logan Paul, yeah. Yeah, it's uh, I'm looking at it here. It's um Flat Earth to the Edge and Back Dude, <laughs> movie. Funny. His friend like comes clean because they find this video. Uh some they thought somebody broke into the house the night before, but they they find the surveillance video of their friend going crazy and going around the house getting all the globes and smashing them. And, like, they confront him the next day. They're like, dude, did you do this? Like, why did you go crazy last night and break all the globes? And then, like, he rips his posters off. And behind the posters are other posters of, like, flat earth stuff and stuff. But, yeah. like, it's all fake. And the dude starts telling the story about when he was little. His parents were, like, uh, stationed on, Antar on, on Antarctica. And how his best friend fell off the edge of the earth. <laughs> But he started crying. Oh, he started crying during it, dude. And it was like, it was so good. It was so funny. Uh, the, the funniest <laughs> thing that I've heard uh Flat Earth um, person say to me was, the reason we find dinosaur bones is because dinosaurs live on the other flip side. 
<laughs> and over time, the, the the bones end up on this side and our bones end up on their side. And what ends up happening is like every 150 to 200 uh, million years, we flip sides. <laughs> I'm like, this isn't a fucking coin where it's a coin toss at the beginning of a like football game. How do game, you know, man. Pep? Prove to me that it's not. I can. Go watch Neil deGrasse Tyson. <laughs> I don't he's have a, to prove it. I got, I got my man actor. out there. He is a paid actor. He's a shill. He literally oh, works yeah, yeah. for the other yeah, side shill. dinosaur people, whatever they are. Yeah. He's Let's put it this way. If the Earth was flat, do you think Trump out? would not say something about it? <laughs> <laughs> That's the first thing. Tweeting. His PS, dumb ass. Earth is first flat. day of office got in was like, Tell me, is the Earth flat? That's what I need to know. He don't want to know about aliens or if Elvis is still alive or anything actually important. Yeah, it's like, is the Earth flat? Like, you know, love uh, the man or hate him? No. <laughs> <laughs> love the man or hate him, but you got to give him credit. He can go on Twitter and say anything and get like at least fifty percent of the world pissed off. Dude. He can get on there and say, I love flowers. 50% of the world would be like, I don't like flowers anymore. <laughs> you know? Know. It's just that bad, man. Dude, let him get oh, on the man. console world side. He's like, ah, Xbox is so vastly superior than the PlayStation. Mm -hmm. And sales will decline for fucking Xbox so quick. Bill Gates would have him shot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Texas, it's, motherfucker. <laughs> it's funny because it's true. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, he's, he's he's over there trying to cure malaria, but you know he shoots someone for declining Xbox sales. <laughs> oh man, it is funny. It is funny. I remember like back in the day. I think it was right around when he got elected. He was like, said something about Ronda Rousey and him being friends. Ronda's like, I do not like you, motherfucker. Like I do not like you. <laughs> and then she lost her next fight, and he was like, he tweeted out, dude, he's the president. He's like. She got beat soundly. It was a sound beating or something like. I was like, "What the fuck? This is so crazy to me that he tweets out the shit." That it's he the Trump out. curse, man. Anyone that comes out like in any kind of professional sport or, um, you know, even politically, like for some reason they just fall flat on their face. It's like, what the hell? Yeah, and he's not doing anything but sitting there like tweeting. Like he, it's not like he's out there actively like. I'm going to fuck up this pole vaulter's day. You know, it's just like, my God. Yeah. I think, uh, you know, whether you love him or hate him, I think the best thing you could probably do is just sit back and let him put his own foot in his mouth. Sometimes like yep. you're That's sitting out there trying to things. get everybody to hate him so much. You end up just making yourself look stupid. Yeah. And, yep. and that's what's, that's what's happened man. every time. But then you kind I of mean, just sit back for a week or two and it's like, he, he does stupid shit all the time. I, mean, yeah, I like his recent tweet, like um, the coronavirus. The coronavirus will eventually just disappear. Well, no <laughs> shit, Sherlock. Like, holy shit, bro. He was like, I didn't even know Category Five hurricanes existed. I was like, <laughs> you are the dumbest motherfucker ever. Sometimes, man. Like, what the but, hell? You know, going back to what you were saying earlier, there are people that are smart at what they do. You're right and... because it's like if you think critically about it, he makes headlines more than anybody ever. Not just presidents, yep. but man, they, there's like money to be made with social media and shit like that and all like all of this stuff, man. It's crazy. Yeah, it's... Oh my gosh, that's too funny. Same brain. That's awesome. That's awesome. You guys seem super like a super awesome couple. <laughs> but yeah, it's um it's just amazing to me that the hate for that man is just so crazy. I've never, I've never lived uh, in a time where I feel that based off of a political opinion, I could be seriously hurt walking out in public just by voicing an opinion. And, you know, I'll be the first to say I'm not a huge Trump fan, but I don't think he's doing that bad either. You know, like we've had way worse Way Dude, I've, worse. What's scary is that, like, I don't, I don't know all the ins and outs of everything that goes on in the world. But mm -hmm. when you start hearing about all the good things that are happening since he's been in office, and like all the, the, the job market, the unemployment rate, the, the this, the that, and then it's like a few months ago, I heard, I, I was listening to this podcast with these two, uh, guys, and they're in the, I, I'm see, this is how illiterate I am. They're in the money business. <laughs> They're talking about stocks and money and 
all of these different things, all the world markets, all the financial of the economies in different countries and stuff, and how like China is just so hating Trump right now for all of this stuff because he's trying to yep. take back. Like, and they went into like all the bankers that were responsible for that fallout. Uh, like, what was it? Like ten, fifteen years ago, whatever. Like GP all of those same of people went and made all these deals with all these people in China basically selling out America and yeah. how Trump is trying to reverse all of this stuff and they're like they're like it's it's getting so bad for for China right now that like they're not going to wait until they're not going to try to wait like it's getting so bad for them they cannot wait until he gets reelected uh or not reelected but like trying to get somebody else to get in there they're going to actively push to, for this dude to be impeached within the next month like these dudes were calling it and then all that shit came out and i was like yep. i was like dang dude like they really are trying to get this dude impeached like real quick and it's and you know it is they say it's for this but then like like listening to other sides of it and stuff it seems like it might not be for that and it might be all these other people who were making money off of selling america out to yep. the rest of the world and Trump and, and, and other people are trying to put a stop to that type of thing. And there's a lot of truth to that. And he ended up winning again when China actually agreed to a hellish um, increase in tariffs for their imported goods to America. They came to an agreement on the trade. But you didn't hear about that in the news because they sweep it under the rug. You know, the only place that will cover it is like Fox News, you know, someone that's a little bit more conservative leaning than most of the other media outlets. Now, I hate when people are like, oh, you know, Fox News is right and, you know, CNN is left. And then, you know, you, you're stupid if you watch Fox. Well, the people that watch Fox are like, people that watch CNN are stupid. So what I do, and I can show you right on my phone right now, my top list of my websites I go to are Fox News, CNN, MSNBC, and Pornhub, right? So <laughs> what I do <laughs> is I the try is to... Honest. I read both. I'm not kidding. It's probably xnxx.com. But anyways, um, I, I read both the stories and headlines from both, and I realize that one is like telling a semi-truth. The other one is telling the other semi-truth. You take them, you put them together, and you're like, they're both fucking lying in some way. They're taking one word and twisting it and making it into another, and then you got to make an educated decision, and that's where – we all should be like, don't take everything at face value yeah. and just make your own decision based off of what information you are given and do the research into things. That's one thing uh, that I can give YouTube credit, man, because they I'm not subscribed to CNN or Fox News, but I mm -hmm. watch them both equally enough to where it always is recommending me both of them. You know what I mean? And you would like yeah. some people would say, like, oh, YouTube is one way or the other. But it, it, they seem to recommend me equal stuff. Uh, I don't see, you know, them trying to push one or the other on me. Not so much anymore. There was a point where they were was pushing there? a lot of the of a left agenda, uh, especially around the um, 2016 election. But once they started getting called out for it, and a lot of those hearings were like, "Yeah, Facebook was doing this," and well, I retract my statement. And, okay. And, yeah. Well, no, no, no. You're right now. No, you're 100 percent accurate. Um, but they did change their algorithms to make it a little bit more um, unbiased. And I, I like the fact that Google at least took the step back and said, eh, maybe we are kind of messing up the information since we are the number one video watched you know, area on the Internet. Right. It's yeah. probably only second to Twitch anymore. Um, but, you know, when you take a step back and you, you take the noise away, you know, like everyone's saying, oh, he's a racist because he wants to build a wall and all this and that. The wall He's was in this. my mind. Huh? The wall was literally on the tip of my tongue. <laughs> yeah, and uh, you know, we can go over that a little bit too. And uh, But anyways, take away all of that noise. What is the man actually doing? What is he accomplishing? Yeah. He did the first prison reform bill that has been done in like 30 years, which released something like 6,000 non-offensive uh, drug related charged people from jail there are people that are sitting in jail right now for like 60 years for possession of marijuana of like yeah. three ounces i'm like it's ridiculous to see people in jail like that and you know and i think we can all agree that 
there is a disproportionate number of certain races in jails based off of areas and so forth. I'm not yeah. going to get down the whole, you know, race thing or anything. Um, different topic, another time. Um, but there is a disproportionate number there. And everything that Trump has done has really been the betterment for America and Americans in general. When you look at everything, like the prison reform made no sense or it made a lot of sense because a lot of the convictions were not fair at all. Yeah. Um, then you look at um, some of the other things he's done, like, um, oh, my God, there's there, I, I don't have a whole list in front of me. I wasn't prepared to really talk about this. I was going to try to shy away from it, actually. Um, but you take away all the noise. The man is what he is. He's a diehard American who puts America first. And when you start stripping away the layers of the onion, you realize there might be a little bit more swamp than we we first thought. Um, but again, I go back to if the man would just keep his damn mouth shut on Twitter for a little bit, he probably wouldn't have as many problems as he has. Dude, like all it, it, like I have a lot of black friends. I -hmm. always have, and I probably always will. Same. And I've noticed like, since he's been president, like those relationships have been a little bit strained. Like we, me and my buddy that I met through video games, uh, we've talked about it, man. It's like. It's just, like, I wish that that just wasn't a thing. I wish that all the hate that he brings along with whatever help he does. I know every president comes with their baggage, uh, and that's the thing that I I try to focus on. And, like, you hear about, like, the fucking body bag list that the Clintons have under their name. And then you hear all the shit that, like, that uh, George Bush did, all the evil shit he was into. And, you know, Barack Obama... I'm sure that you could probably dig up all kind of shit on that guy too. Uh, his is nowhere near, from what I've heard, like his is nowhere near near as evil as uh, the Clintons or the Bushes. But you know, Trump comes with his I mean, baggage, aside man. From the Trump... fact he was best friends with uh, a known terrorist who literally blew up a federal bo- uh, building. See, yeah, yeah, yeah. See, I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> As versed in the Barack Obama drama. <laughs> no, nah, and you know, the whole thing is, is like a lot of people give up, right? And he wasn't the world's best president, but again, he wasn't the world's worst either. You know, he was good. He was good with the people. He knew how to talk to them. And you kind of felt like you were on his level. But a lot of his agendas, to me, didn't say. match what It I seemed like he did a lot of him. bad shit as far as like his policies and stuff. Yeah. But as far as like being a good person on a scale like he was a decent person but the other president yeah. seems like they're just like bad people trump like i grew up in the south um and he he just seems like a lot of people that i grew up around like a lot of my family members and stuff like that who were like they just say whatever's on their mind man and yeah they don't give a shit really and i mean he's like 70 years old too it's just it kind of sucks that all this good stuff that he it, it seems to be uh, coming from him is being overshadowed by all of this drama and it's it's to the point to where like people it, it, people have died over this shit like people yeah. have gotten in fist fights over it uh a bunch of bad shit that you don't want like it's like a damn borderline civil war about to break out going on like if he would have gotten impeached uh, who the fuck knows what would have happened yeah, I mean, well he was technically impeached. Removal from office is what people are are getting confused um with a lot when they think impeachment like they were like yeah. oh and he's out of office i'm like ah, that's not really how it works there's a trial in the senate and everything else and but um you know actually going back to the wall part and that that was my point i was making is when he started talking about the wall that's when trump was then branded a racist because oh he doesn't like you know hispanic people and that that's where it came from oh he's just trying to keep all of them out and that's that's not the truth i mean a lot of nations have walls that protect their citizens from people like Ukraine. They have a, like a, a wall between them and Russia. I mean, it doesn't, See, really I didn't stop look much, at it as him being a there. racist. I looked at it and be, him being, uh, out of the loop, like disconnected from what the fuck actually happens. And almost like borderline, like, is this guy an idiot? Because like, I don't see that working. I grew up, working with a ton of Hispanics and stuff like that. I grew up with a dude who was on probation yeah. on a fake name here under a fake, like he's on probation. I didn't understand it, dude. I had to question this guy. Like, how are you on probation under a fake name, dude? 
And he's like, that that's how legit it is. He's like, yeah. I came here from Mexico underground, came into an office building somewhere in Texas, and was given a fake name, fake all this stuff. I have to pay them, like, every year I have to send them money, or else they would literally, like, find somebody, and I don't know, I may be killed, they might send me back. Like, who knows? But they have, like, Damn. this whole system of how it all works, the underground shit. And then another guy I met, like, he was here, like, all legally, um, did the legal stuff. And he was still saying, like, the government every year, they want their money. I have to pay every single year to stay here. Uh, I had to take the test, all this stuff to get in and all this stuff. But I still have to pay every single year, like, an arm and a leg just to stay here every year. But man, like that, the That's one guy talking about, card, right? yeah, for his green card and stuff. But if he became a U.S. citizen, that all kind of goes away. You know, I don't know. I don't know the ins and outs of it. Um, he had me like yeah. write a letter for his wife because his wife was trying to get her U.S. citizenship or something. And yeah. he had me like write a letter on her behalf. But it really tripped I mean, me out that dude like telling me he came underground yeah. to Texas. And I'm like, well, a wall is not going to work. No, What's the wall gonna do if they're coming from underground the, tunnels? That's not really the real point of the wall, right? It's actually twofold, and I think a lot of people lose sight of this. And you brought it up earlier when you were talking about your from uh, Cuba. They came over here on a raft. That's dangerous as shit. Hundreds of people die. Thousands of people die a year trying to get here that way. Dude. And the same thing happens for people trying to cross over into the United States through that area. You hear about young kids, uh, women, men drowning in the river trying to get here, um, dying out in the desert because they got lost. It's hot as hell, you know, and then it gets cold as hell at night. Yeah. And so it's really twofold. Not only are we trying to, you know, protect our borders a little bit more from those, those kinds of crossings, but we're also trying to deter them from putting themselves in danger to try to get here. Yeah. And I'm all for people having a better life by trying to get here. But there are other means to do so. Like if you're seeking legal asylum from the countries you're leaving, go to the checkpoint. There are you are more protected by going to that checkpoint legally in the United States than you are crossing the border illegally. If you come in, you seek um, asylum in the United States, you have to then go before a judge and the judge will then grant you um, a court date, usually a couple, three, four weeks out. And you're released into the United States, but then you have to show up for your court date. And if you don't do that, then you get you know, deported if they ever find you. But that is the, the right way to do it. And if that is followed, we're never going to turn anyone away. It's against our, our, our rules as a nation to turn around political asylum uh, seeking uh, anybody. You know, that's not happening. If you come through seeking political asylum, you don't just get turned away. It's, it's illegal, and he can't change that. Yeah, I but like, I don't know, man. Like, hearing yeah, their stories no about, like, coming over on these makeshift rafts from Cuba mm -hmm. and the girl saying that she literally saw people get eaten by sharks. Yeah. Like, and then they get over here, or they, they're like, all right, we're not going to fucking kick no more. Nobody else is getting in the water, so they're just, like, floating. They end up getting picked up by the U.S. Coast Guard and getting put in Guantanamo Bay. And then yeah. she's like, half the people that were on the raft died in there. Mm -hmm. And she's like, I'm like, I'm lucky. She's like, dude, my daughter has like a hundred pairs of shoes because I didn't have any shoes growing up. I didn't yeah. have any shoes until I got to America, got out of Guantanamo Bay. And like, and she's like, now my daughter can have as many shoes as she wants just because I didn't <laughs> fucking have any shoes growing up. I didn't have I gotta feel the same way because I grew up poor, man. And I'm <laughs> like, I, I, I can't go to fucking CVS without buying my kids like an extra like um, uh, beanie baby and another little. Yeah, it's ten bucks, but I still do it, and I usually get my wife something too, you know. But um, <laughs> yeah, it's just one of those things. I think when you don't have, you want your kids to have, and you try your damnedest to just make sure that that happens. And so, you know, good for her. You know, she came here and you know she did her thing. Um, but you know, it sucks that so many people have to die by trying to attempt to do things like that. Well, Cuba's a little bit different in the fact that they don't let people leave, yeah. so they have to kind of do it the way they do it. Um, you know, because, you know, the communist regime and so forth. Um, but, you know, a lot of times the people that die on those trips, they're already kind of feeble to begin with. And, you know, that's a lot of the point of trying to prevent people from trying to make that trip because we want them to go the way that is safer and legal for them. 
But the hard part about that is getting there is also hard because some of the like Mexican cartels will actually stop them and pick them up and throw them into human trafficking. Like it's a fucking double edged sword. There is no right answer. And that's the thing that sucks. You hear one side saying, oh, we should do it this way. And you have the other side saying, oh, we should do it this way. And then, oh, you're both idiots. You know, they're all arguing and stuff, but neither one of them have a clear way of doing it because there's no way to solve it. There just isn't. We don't live in a utopian society. We're nowhere near it. You can't fix all the problems. Let's just fix what we can fix and focus on that. And that's that's where I think a lot of people lose um, sight on things. It's just like, yeah, the world sucks. Let's just fucking realize that and get out of your bubble and live your life the best you can and be nice to everyone. And that's all you can really ask of anybody is just be nice to everyone. Exactly, man. Exactly. I like consider myself a Trump supporter and the fact that like I'm an American, he's my president right now. I don't think that it does me or him or anybody around me any good holding like ill will towards the guy or anything that he stands for, anything like that. Um, You know, I hope that he's not out there destroying the fucking earth or (laughs) ruining my future kids' lives in any way. But me sitting here stressing about that and having negative thoughts about that, like, I'm literally, there's literally nothing I can do to change those types of things. So, like you said, like, I can, I can, I worry about what I can control. Right. And if I really, 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 really wanted to change it, I would go and start going to school for politics or something like that. Just like if I really cared about the flat earth thing, dude, I'm going to have to go (laughs) and research this stuff for myself and try to make an impact. And if I really, truly believe the world was flat, I would try to be the one that, like, uncovers it for everybody. Like, I'm going to be the one who rides off the edge of the earth and records it, and y'all all all get to see me fall to my death to wherever it leads. I don't know where. Streaming on Twitch, man. Exactly. I will, dude. (laughs) I will. Me and my brother ride um... out there on a boat. To the edge of the earth and I, I, I going back to something you said there you know you wanted you know, saying if you wanted to really make a change you'd go to school for politics and stuff like that and i don't think that that's the right way to really help anything because politics is politics that game has been played since the dawn of time right and it's not gotten us really anywhere granted the united states when it comes down to it is the best country to live in in the world we have our problems we'll openly admit it We're one of the few countries in the world that will allow us to talk about our faults. You look at Germany, you're not even allowed to talk about Nazi Germany. They ban the word, right? But when you are in the United States, we don't ban the Confederate flag. We don't ban the mention of Confederacy in the Civil War. We own it. We wear it on our shoulder like a badge of, yeah, this is where we were, but look where the hell we are now. You know, let's not forget our past by knowing where we've been, right? You know, that whole thing again. Um, but it's truth to remember it because if you don't remember it, history repeats itself. So, um, make way, make way (laughs) where where I was going with this is you can do more by helping out locally, you know, helping out a homeless shelter, go there, you know, contribute some time, help out those people, um, you know, help out a friend, you know, help them move, you know, it's things like that, that help you know, move things along. It's not going out there and think you're going to hit a home run, right? Make those small changes. If you make a bunch of small changes, I make a bunch of small changes. All your friends do it. Those turn into large changes. It doesn't happen because the president says, I'm going to do this. That That's not how it happens. It happens at the, at you and me, not the politicians. Um, and the, one of the last things I'll say about the whole political topic is, you know, um, I, I think that we are in the era we are right now. People can't talk about it. You were talking about like your friends or like, it feels like there's a little bit of tension and rift because ever since we were young, we were always told do not talk about religion and politics, right? Everyone's everyone in here in this stream or anyone that sees this later will have heard that saying we've all heard it, but I think that that's the problem. We should all be taught how to talk religion and politics. So that way we're not so too dismissive of other people's opinions and their ideas and we shouldn't have to educate ourselves on it by experience we should be taught people are different people have different opinions and just because they have a different opinion doesn't necessarily mean that they are wrong or right or better than you it's just a difference in opinion 
you know, if you said the sky was like green, I would first ask, are you colorblind? But I'm not going to be dismissive of you either. You know, um, I'll listen to you out. I'll listen to anybody as long as you can make an argument. But if you're making a stupid argument, I'm going to put you in your fucking place, too. But, yeah. you know, um, uh, we just need to be more understanding of other people's positions and listen to them. And as my wife said in chat, just be open minded and kind. And there's no yeah. reason why you and I have had a very cordial talk about multiple things through this whole uh, past, I'd say, 40 minutes or so. And we did so being open minded to the other person, open minded to the people in chat and not seeking anything offensive or personal. You know, it's just our experiences, our um, our, our thoughts, our opinions. That's all it is. Yeah. 40 minutes, yeah. dude. Yeah. Well, I'm saying we've only been on that topic for 40 minutes. OK, OK. I was about to say, dude. I know we've 40 been almost minutes? two hours at this, but um, <laughs> like, yeah. it, it goes by quick, though, when you haven't you yeah, just flowing from topic to topic. But, but yeah, yeah, I don't be kind. That's the only thing I can say. <laughs> I agree too. People have stuck shot away, especially here about talking from politics and all that stuff that it, we're getting farther and farther away from a place to where we should be getting, I think, because I think eventually we should get to a point to where like one person, like one president running everything. I haven't like it's very archaic. And I feel yeah. like for when it was invented and it was come up with, it worked great and everything. Maybe it didn't work great, but it worked fine. But I feel like we're with the with especially with technology. I feel like eventually if we get to a point to where they're teaching everybody in school uh adequate politics and everybody gets to the age of 18 and they know everything that they should know and they're we should almost get to a point to where every day in the morning you have like a look we all have like a little smart device and it comes up. We all have to like vote on the daily stuff and we all have to do our daily like a uh, reading up and keeping up with the current events of what's going on mm -hmm. and maybe be quit. I don't know how it would work, but if, if it was like a, uh, an actual like democracy, like a live vote every single day on stuff. And you know that the, the whole population is educated enough for that type of system to work. Like, I don't know. I feel like eventually we should be able though, to get to something like that. There is actually a Black Mirror episode, something similar to what you're talking about, believe it or not. Oh, really? And one thing that I'm very grateful is we're not a we're not a democracy at all. We are a republic. We are a republic democracy, a democratic republic. Sorry, um, which means we do work off of popular vote, but there are many instances where it's not popular vote; it's unanimous. You know, in order for um, – all right, so let's just go through the chain of how a bill is created, right? The House creates a bill, and they pass it. It goes to the Senate. The Senate votes on it and passes it, and then the president signs it into law. And then it goes back into the House and gets ratified, blah, 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 all that stuff, right? But then let's say, for instance, the House passes the bill, the Senate passes the bill, and the um, – uh, the president decides I'm going to veto this bill because I don't uh, – schoolhouse clap. Um, <laughs> the House doesn't – sorry, the, the president decides to veto it. It goes back to the Senate, and then they can veto it uh, or override the veto, but they need three-quarters of you know, the, the vote to do so. And that's not a democracy. That is a legitimate republic. That is the people's voices being heard regardless of – the the initial vote because it was just overruled by one person um and then if a bill is considered unconstitutional it goes to the judicial um side of things and they can rule it as yes this is good yes this is bad we saw that with the uh with uh darka was it darka it was the Ameri affordable um care act so um otherwise known as obamacare the single payer system, right? Is it constitutional to force everyone to have to pay for something that they may not use, et cetera? So it's stuff like that that goes through to make sure that it's good for the American people. But anyways, but those, um, that's like th other that's like people who we voted to put in office voting on this stuff as representatives of us. But right. then like between there's so much delay in that, man. It's like by the time we vote them in 
And then, like, a few months later, they could have been corrupted. They could have been fucking, like, yeah. whatever. And now all the stuff that they're signing or not signing or stopping or vetoing or not vetoing, it's like they could have, like, if, I feel like if we all had a live say every day and we all were kept in the loop on a much higher level and we were all held a, a lot more accountable growing up and getting it, like, if we all turned 18 and we all just, like, knew about politics on the level that we should. I don't feel like a system like that would be you hit like a you, bad you thing. actually said it right. The problem is is the corruption. And people don't go into politics to for your best interest. They go for theirs anymore. When it was originally created, it was the same damn way. Do you think it was do you think that our Congress is any different now than the first Congress to ever set foot in there? I mean hell, again going back to drunk history we had people fucking shooting each other in duels. Like Hamilton was <laughs> shot by Burr, right? <laughs> Over nothing. It was literally just a little spat. I mean, you hear about people like punching each other like in the old days. Do you think Jefferson and like um, George Washington got along? Fuck no, they didn't. They hated each other. You know, it's just everyone was like, uh, what they, what they always say in uh, drunk history? They were like um, high schoolers v vying for position in the hierarchy of, you know, popular, you know, whatever. Yeah. Um, it, it's stupid, and it's the same way today. You have Pelosi standing up there like, yo, we need to do it our way, and whatever gibberish she wants to throw out there today because she can't speak right. And then you have Trump, like, over there tweeting, like, fuck you, bitch. And then she's like, well, don't call me a bitch. And you know, it's just stupid. It's, if you really look at it, it's childish. But the problem comes down to corruption. When someone is elected as your official for your district in the House, right, they're supposed to go and represent your best interests. You never hear of anyone going in there saying, I'm here for the Jacksonville District 10 or whatever the hell it is, right? Yeah. They're there to vote for big things, to try to make a name for themselves. And you're like, you have Nunes on the Republican side, and you have like Cory Booker and them on the other side. They're just trying to get those sound bites out there to make it look like they're doing something great in the news and so forth. And it's just all bullshit. Um, but if you break it down, the Republic works when you take out the corruption. But the problem is going back again to a previous conversation is the human element. If everyone was nice to one another, understood, listened to opinions, and wasn't able uh, was was able to change their opinion based on fact then we would have a much better system. But unfortunately, you can't take the human element out of everything. Yeah, you're right, man. You're right. And the best thing you could do is just try to rub off on other people, man. Like, I try to I try to look to other people, to, like, admirable people, and I try to, you know, like, take things that I like about the, the things that I find admirable about them and emulate those things. Because I I want other people to admire me. I think admiring people and having people that you admire in your life, not yeah. idolize, but admire. Like, it, it's it's a lot different to me. Uh, Do you know who Gary V is? Gary Vanderchuk? Yeah, yeah. Gary yeah. V, he's the guy that does all the TikTok videos and shit now. He's like that big business dude. Uh, They're making all those like self motivational things. I found him through Utah, YouTube, but. That's yeah, funny. He, whatever. I, I do a lot of TikTok now. That's too I, I fucking watch because it's hilarious shit. Um, but anyways, and, and the he said something that's kind of stuck with me. He, he was asked one time, um, and I'm going to paraphrase because I was obviously I don't know it word for word. He was asked one time by someone, it was like, who is your hero? And he said, me in 10 years. And then that same person asked him 10 years ago or 10 years later, they were like, who's your hero? He goes, me in 10 years. And the person was like, well, you can't be your own hero consistently. He goes, why not? He goes, I'm not looking up to anybody else. I'm looking up to myself to better myself and push myself forward. So if I imagine who I am 10 years from now, and that's a better person than who I am now, that's my hero. Yeah. And I was like, damn, that's actually pretty fucking smart. I like that. I like that a lot. He, he said, even if it's a day from now, a week from now, set a goal, stick to it. Make something of it. I wish I could follow this advice. I know it. It's yeah. kind of like I yeah, know how Gary to lose v weight, has a but lot I don't. Of good advice. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's yeah. just like, and this is the funny thing. I, I once someone was talking about me about they're like, man, you know a lot about weight loss. Why are you still big? 
I'm like, you will find that fat people know more about nutrition than <laughs> skinny people do. We just have no control. Dude, that's <laughs> no life, man. It's like in the Matrix, dude, the one guy, uh, what was it, Cypher? He like, mm-hmm. he's just sick and tired of knowing everything. He w- He just wants to go back into the Matrix because it's like, even with this computer stuff, man, like the more I get opened up to certain things, the more I understand about life and the struggles. Yeah and stuff like that, and how to overcome struggles, it's like the more I know about stuff, and then if I fall short, I feel way more shittier for falling short than if I was just, uh, you know, ignorance is bliss, is the saying, dude, and it's so true, if you were just ignorant to the fact of all your shortcomings, and you didn't have this, like, better version of yourself that you were looking forward to, and holding yourself accountable to, like, you wouldn't feel that bad for, like, eating bad, or whatever it is that, that it is, that you're trying to like hold yourself accountable to. But why why but, like, feel bad because you failed? It's it's an experience that you learn from. And uh, real quick, cat, uh, I don't know who I really look to, up to anymore because I have a hard time trusting anybody. Um, you can tell the <laughs> truth, bro. You, you I look up I look up to me. my dad quite a bit. I'll be honest. You know, he's awesome. he's always been a hardworking man, and um, you know, he he's never done wrong by me. I mean, we've had our problems, hence why he ended up with four broken ribs. Um, but you know, we always squash them, you know, my dad's always been kind of like my best friend to me, you know, uh, and That's my awesome. stepdad, my stepdad, I look up to both of them. Um, but you know, the whole, the whole thing about it, you know, being ignorant and stuff like that, I find that there's, a, I, I, I wouldn't say that because then you'll become a flat earther one, um, two, <laughs> sorry, I couldn't let that one lie. Um, two <laughs> should have. It's it's dumb to not know yourself. It's okay to know your shortcomings. It's okay to know that you failed at something because there's only one way to go from failure, and that's not to fail. And Cat knows this. I am never afraid to take a chance to do something new. And I think that that's part of my personality. And you've said it yourself. Like, how the fuck do you know all these things? And it's because I've never been afraid to make that leap into something new and try to learn something new. And you always say I'm a jack of all trades, master of none, because I know a lot about shit, but I, I want to go learn something else new. I may not know all the details about it. I can talk to it, but I'll never sit here and claim to be like the best at it. Kind of like with, you know, streaming and stuff like that. I can do all kinds of crazy shit with it, but I'm not the best. But what's the definition of the best? Is it the most viewers? Is it the most followers? Or is I it- was going to say, yeah, man, I would um, love to... Uh... Uh... I would love to have a whole podcast with you just on like content creation and the the field of it all. Um, I think we could have a good conversation about mm-hmm. that because I think in another life uh, you'd be one of the top ones. Like you are, you're great to listen to. I've always enjoyed your streams. You're good at games. I you're, appreciate you're, it. You're good enough at games to where you can carry a stream. You don't like you're not fucking running into walls and shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> like, I, every time I watch you, you, you do decent at games and stuff like that. Um, you know a fuck ton, like, of just cool things that you can add to streams. Um, I think, you know, I think that... But it's also a curse. You can ask, again, I'm going to my wife because I... Because, like I say, I get fixated on things. And that's why Dreams is... Because I can really express that in there and I can get fixated and it's not harming anyone. Um, but like I get fixated on one thing and I'm like, I can do better. I can do better. I can do better, but I have no need to do better. I don't have the following that pushes me to do so. This is me doing it to myself. And that's why it's kind of a curse. I mean, I have a fucking $400 mic in front of me <laughs> for, I what? Know what you mean. Yo, for what, and, um, it's only because I know it's the best mic, one of the best mics you can get for this. Um, but anyways, it, it's a curse in the fact that. I have spent more time dicking around with OBS and doing the things I've done than actually streaming. And that is my downfall as a streamer. I tend to get caught up in changing the stream, changing my content. Uh, And when I say content, I mean like the visual aspect of things. I get caught up in those things and then I'm like, ah, I figured it out and I get it working. And then I'm like, I can do better. This isn't perfect. This pixel is showing a little bit too much. I don't like that. Why is that thing blurry like that? 
and even like when we started this podcast i'm like why the fuck is my face all blurry over there it's a 200 dollars <laughs> camera it shouldn't be blurry yeah. but then i gotta realize this is going through discord and not through obs which is gonna add a whole different layer of things yeah um yeah you know, it, it, it's a curse because you just keep diving into things and a buddy of mine um spider you've seen him on streams with me and he was like why don't you just become a manager of people's streams express your uh creativity through their streams and i'm like nah fuck that i don't like other people <laughs> but um, yeah it, it's it's definitely something i've thought about like you know i'd love to be the back end person be like hey i'll do uh all your stuff i'll manage you for like 10 percent of whatever you earn stuff like that um but then i think about it i don't know if i'd have too much uh, fun with that because i also do like to stream i yeah. like to be on the camera i like to be able to play games I like to be able to meet people like you and you know fam time and you know purple andy and all those guys like that is what streaming is about to me is trying to make those friends and those connections and while we all don't talk all the time like i haven't talked to purple in probably like three months i could shoot him a message right now and be like hey what's going on dude and spark up a conversation right and it, you just That's... don't get that kind of that kind of connection anymore yeah and that's like, you know, really even insane. if I never, you know, make it or anything like that with this, you know, just meeting the people that I've met so far and uh, forming the connections like that that are going to be, you know, I, I see them as lifelong connections. I mean, I've known a yeah. lot of you guys for four years. I don't see why the hell I wouldn't know you guys 20, 30 years from now. So, I mean, that's that's cool in itself to me. I, and I appreciate that about my time on Twitch and, and YouTube or whatever the fuck. Like, that in itself, I mean, I think it's it it's sad to know that so many talented people like you yourself uh that i feel like should have made it didn't or haven't yet haven't yet i was gonna say <laughs> haven't yet but I, I like i say didn't i feel like you should have made it two years ago like two three years ago you're already at that level to where if there weren't if there wasn't such a bad like problem with oversaturation i feel like if twitch added in something years ago it's almost too late at this point, but if they added something in years ago that filtered out console streamers to where if you went to go watch a certain game, you could like filter out to where if it was only mm -hmm. people streaming from PC, uh, you know, now, two years later, a lot of people have switched to PC. It's not even that hard to buy a PC and download OBS and go yeah. live from that even, but man, the, like, man, just the, if, if I, things were different. I, here, here's the thing i kind of i agree that there are a lot of people that stream you know because four years ago like when you and i started it wasn't that big i mean it was getting there um but we were kind of like on that cusp of we were just a fucking year too late right <laughs> you yeah. were like oh we want to do this shit oh man knows how to do this shit um but you can do things that make you set out differently than other people and one of them is what you're doing here. You're in the just chatting, you know, section, which is absolutely booming here on Twitch. You take this content and what do you do with it, right? What do you do when this is done? What are you going to do with this podcast when it's done? Well, I'm working on putting audio, like just audio up on something, but I edited a little bit and then put it on my YouTube as well. There you go. That's where you're going to get your discoverability. You don't just rely on Twitch to do it for you. It's kind of like going out there like, I'm going to start a business. What are you going to sell? Dude. Hair extensions. I, I work in the field of e-commerce, so let me tell you, there's a lot of people that sell hair extensions. It sounds funny, but let me tell you, a lot of people take that shit seriously. All right, so let's go on that premise. It's an oversaturated field, right? How is that person going to make money? They think that just putting a website up and start offering hair extensions on their website, they're going to fucking become a millionaire overnight. What do you do to that website? You market it. You, you put SEO on it. You get PPC. Um, that stands for search engine optimization, pay per click. There are campaigns that you run online. You got to get your name out there. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know that. Um, that being said, you got to market yourself, and this is where I fall <clears throat> flat. Like I don't have the time um, to really dedicate to do that. And I say that, but I do. And I'll explain to you how I have the time to do it, and I'm going to explain to you how you have the time to do it. A lot of people think that you have to stream seven days a week on this set schedule 
to become big on Twitch. And that's not how you do it. You look at some of the bigger names, they didn't become big by streaming every day. They didn't become, you know, the most watched person on, you know, Twitch because they streamed every day. Look at Dr. Disrespect. Where did he become popular first? I'm not sure, actually. YouTube. He made YouTube videos of him and his friends uh, playing Xbox, and it evolved into this character by him going to the store one day and buying a mustache and a wig. And then it evolved into him putting glasses on and becoming this persona, right? He built his career off of YouTube and then moved it over to Twitch with that persona. So if you do it in reverse now, which is what's going to get your name out there, fuck Twitter. Twitter is oversaturated as hell, too. How many hashtags are you going to put in your shit to try to get it found, right? You're not going to get it found. And uh, it doesn't hurt to do it, by the way, because there is no real such thing as oversaturating Twitter. If, don't listen to people like, oh, you should only post like three things a day. No, fuck that shit. Throw 20 tweets out there. Who cares? You know, because you look at it this way. How many followers do you have on Twitter? Like 100. Okay. Do you think those 100 people give a shit if you tweet 20 times a day? Because the people that that's going to reach is not those 100 people. It's going to be the five, 6,000 other people that end up seeing your 20 posts. It's not going to be the same 6,000 people. When they go to your Twitter account, they'll be like, why the fuck is this guy posting 20,000 times a day? I don't care about that. You're doing your thing, right? No one should you know, tell you how to do your thing. But um, you take your stuff here, and then you can market it over on YouTube by taking your content and making it marketable and searchable and findable, and then link that shit to your Twitch. And then people will slowly go over. Um, have you ever heard of Pay Well Be Money? No. Dude, look him up. I'll, I'll send you a link to his stuff afterwards. He started on Twitch, and he started doing some funny shit on YouTube, and you're going to fucking die at his stuff. He is he's fucking hilarious. Um, but that's how he was able to do it, taking his content from Twitch, putting it over on YouTube, making original content over there by reviewing stuff. It's, it's hilarious. Um, and just marketing himself. Um, and just stick with it. That's the combination. Don't stream seven days a week. Stream three. Take two days off. Take two days to upload content to YouTube. That's the that's the the the, the magic, you know, right there. Now I need to follow that shit. I know the formula. <laughs> it's worked because I've taken stuff and I put it on YouTube. Like I put up a video of me playing Arcage, and I linked it to um my Twitter. I'm oh, sorry, my Twitch. And I got like 70 followers and I haven't even been been streaming on Twitch, right? I haven't streamed on Twitch except for lately in like three months. But I got 70 followers by not doing a single thing on Twitch. Dude, I, I want to do a whole podcast with you on this topic specifically, man. Because I think that. I think that we have a lot to, to teach. There's still a lot of people just now getting into Twitch and a lot of people yeah. still trying to navigate the waters. And uh, a lot of what you just said is right on the money, dude. And I think that is a, a little snippet, a little preview of our <laughs> next podcast. Yeah. Um, if anybody enjoyed this, go check out Pep. Uh, what have you been like? You're on Twitch now, right? Yeah, um, I'm still trying to feel the waters out for where I feel more comfortable. Yeah, um, Twitch is always going to be that like, spot for me because that's like where all my friends are. Um, but I, I'm still feeling the waters out over on Mixer. I think tomorrow I'm going to stream on Mixer just to see how it goes um, because you know each one has its pros and cons. Yeah, you know, you're talking about oversaturation. Mixer isn't oversaturated, but it comes with its downside too. If you're looking to make a career out of it. Mixer's probably not the way to go unless you're shrouded and being paid $30 million to go over there, right? Right. Um, but, you know, it, you, you got to weigh your options. Either way, you're not going to be found just by streaming or being good at a game. You got to get your name out there. And that's why my wife has graciously volunteered to be my social media expert. <laughs> Dude, I mean, even Copy. even what she's been saying is right on the money. So, yeah. uh I'm going to re-upload this to YouTube if anybody just joined or anything like that, uh, caught the latter half of it and enjoyed it. Make sure you go check out the YouTube channel. I've been posting all the like the VODs and everything and a little bit shorter so you don't have to worry about my intro, re-watching. And talking for hours. Yeah, dude. He talked for like 15 <laughs> minutes at the beginning about nothing. So I'm going to yeah. cut that out for sure. But, but no, yeah, seriously. Please, please. 
uh, I would love to do another one with these, especially on that topic, uh, Twitch type stuff, man, just content creation. Uh, so. Double checked. I am subscribed to you. Oh, on the YouTube the bell on the YouTube. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. You're so welcome. You I, I, I was bell. like, I haven't seen any of the new VODs pop up. What the hell is going on? Oh yeah. I didn't have you notified. I'm sorry. It's okay, dude. I just subscribed. Click to the YouTube bell guys. Channel. Click yeah, the bell. I'm sorry. But yeah, go check him out on Twitch and Mixer, just uh, so you always catch the man wherever he decides to stream. And uh, he's definitely a great. It's dude. probably gonna be Twitch. You got one of the most popping streams, man. Like uh, you're, the shit that you got going on, literally, you'd need to. I don't know. We'd have to spend hours on you explaining how you do it, cause I, it's just, <laughs> I can't, I can't make sense of it, dude. A lot well, of I've I'm gotten good enough honest. now to where if I watch somebody streams for a few minutes, I'd be like, okay, I see what they're doing there. But yours, yeah. I like. I I don't know. I can't figure it out, bro. <laughs> Your body turns into kaleidoscopes and stuff, and it's like, okay. Like, that and I have the uh, Super Mario three, like where you try to match up the things. I do that with my camera too. Oh man, you definitely. Let me tell you, stream. I'm gonna take a picture um, after this is over, and I'll send it to you here on Discord of all of my scenes. And you're gonna be like, the fuck? Yeah, and then I'll just <laughs> pass not, out. I only use four. I only use four scenes. I have. My start screen, my post screen, uh, I post means post start, uh, game and end. That's it. Those are the only scenes I use, but I have like 50 scenes. That's insane. Yeah. I'll, I'll take a picture. I'll show you. I mean, that doesn't like eat up on something. You got top of the line stuff. No, as long as it's off, stuff. it doesn't eat anything. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Pep. Well, thank you for uh, being You're a welcome. part of this. I really enjoyed it. Hope all of you enjoyed it. Cat, thank you for the follow. Thanks for sticking around. Uh, it was a pleasure getting to talk to you, get to chat a little bit with you. And we don't live that far away, man. We have to go on like a little quadruple date or something. We have said that for like three years. <laughs> I know. I've never even met you. No. This is ridiculous. No. Well, I guess the only way to meet me is to hit me in my car. <laughs> no, dude. I would never <laughs> do that. It'd be a lot more pleasant, pleasant of an experience than that. Yep. But well, how about this? Once my wife feels good enough that she can actually go out there and do her thing, um, we'll, we'll definitely sync up and, and be able to do some shit, man. Yeah, definitely. And I wish you a speedy recovery, Kat. And uh, look forward to the next one of these. Y'all take it easy, and I'll right. see you on the next